are live. <laughs> the Nostalgic Podcast. Hello there, everybody. Welcome to a Sunday afternoon here in Atlanta, Georgia. But we have Chance Bartels, Ron Goss, and Sarah. Hey, hey. Happy Sunday, everybody. Happy Sunday. Here we go again. Nice to see you, Ron Goss. Last time you were on the show, you were over here at the studio in my place. Correct Mundo, Mr. Al Hardy. That's right. Yeah. Ron and I go back to uh, Kicks Radio. When he was a disc jockey, he used the name uh, Ron Wizard, right? Crazy Ron. Crazy Ron. All right. <laughs> so that goes back a long time ago. That goes back to the 80s, doesn't it? I think. 89 I don't think. to 91. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, I was there for a lot longer. I was at Kicks till uh, uh, basically when I left Cumulus, when Chance left Cumulus. We both did. Yeah. Yeah. So and everybody true. left Cumulus. So how I you was doing? over there. What? What, Sarah? I said I was over there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get a chest lead. I just never was there. <laughs> well, I see uh, Jim's camera at Dawn is here. Sarah's here. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll put yeah. their comments on the screen. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Uh, thank you. Well, it's just going to be like, I don't know. We're going to talk about everything, right? Sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, Okay. How you been doing, Sarah? Uh, overall, pretty good. Thank you. Um, well, I noticed, you know, you said you were tired a lot. I hope you're getting some rest and some sleep. No, I'm not. But I will eventually, yes. Oh. oh. Yeah. yeah. I, I, well, I'm doing a lot of work with, you know, for other people and, you know, myself. So. Well, you're still staying at the same place, aren't you? You haven't moved. Uh, no, no, yeah. I, uh, supposedly, at the end of this month, we're supposed to, you know, move out. But my mom had to get more time to get her place ready and and how it works out. Oh, where are you going to move to? Temecula and in with my mom. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. Yeah. It's five steps or no, four steps above uh, the, you know, the street. So I'm going to go there. Okay. So it's not very far from where you are now. No, I'm in Hannah and, you know, to get there with all the traffic and stuff, it's about 30 minutes or so. Give or take. Oh, right? okay. Okay. Yeah. No, that's not too bad. No, it's not. So. No, no, Jim. It's WKHX in Atlanta, Georgia, a hundred thousand watt country station. It used to be called that. Then some idiot rebranded it as the new new country. country. <clears throat> Kick well, was a was a much better uh, handle for that station. Well, it's a much better brand. Uh, I started working there um, in 1980. I can't. Uh, it's been a long time. Eighty. <clears throat> 88, I think, or 87, something like that. That's the year you bought your house, 88. Yeah, I was there, actually. I started, but uh, I bought my house in 88, but I was there a year before that, so I guess it was 87 I started working there. Someone's saying hello to you, Al, on Facebook. Who was that? You're on Facebook. I I'll go log on and see who it is. That's uh, me. Hey, Al. Oh, hey, Mary Smith. <laughs> hey, Mary. <laughs> and Tom Williams like may be with us tonight, by the way. Our friend Tom, Weather Channel Tom. Did you send him a link? Did you send did. him a link? I oh, did. Okay. I did. Okay. They don't really oh, no. brand radio stations anymore. Everything's kind of neutral. Well, you know, I not too many stations have an identity anymore. Ron, I just don't. Either. I don't listen to the local radio too much anymore. I listen to. Well, that's uh, part of the problem. It's too much competition with internet radio. Well, with internet radio, and everything. you know, you can create your own music on your phone. I mean, and I and I have uh, satellite radio at home and it's just I don't know. I just don't listen to local radio. You can make your own playlist and carry it around with you. Listen There's to right. one to. only one radio that I listen to at all. That's I'm, I'm full of radio. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just like all well, day, that's every day. A, yes, an internet station. So that's that's a little bit different. But you know, commercial radio is just not what it used to be. And Ronald know, you know, he knows that. Well, uh, I agree. It went to liners, reading liner cards, and no personality, and it just went very generic. Yeah. Well, out here, uh, the uh, Mexican radio stations interfere with all radio stations. So I own the fistful of radio. There you go. 
I listened to uh, our friend Barry King, WBHF, Cartersville, Georgia, Saturday mornings, 10 a.m. to noon. I really, it's a pop culture show. And I like it because it just takes away the insanity of the week. It makes me relaxed. I'm not saying. Oh, yeah, Barry has, Barry has a good show. He's on a AM station. And where, where's it at? Uh, Cartersville. Cartersville, Cartersville. Georgia. Oh, okay. it, it's been around since 1946. Well, I can't pick it up where I'm at, but I can listen to it online. It's not old. It's classic. Well, anyone can listen to, they have an app, a WBHF app, and you can listen from anywhere. That's the great thing about technology in terms of terrestrial radio. A a signal doesn't really matter anymore. You can have a blowtorch. Listen listen in Russia. You can listen in Ethiopia. You can listen all over the world. As long as you have internet, you can watch, watch everything and anything anywhere in the world now. Oh, Hi, the brain true. benders banter. How are you doing, sir? Ma'am. That, Ma'am, forgive me. I, I, I'm i sorry. Christina, I Uh-oh. told you she just joined the, the, the flocking team. So, Oh, that well, you said BBB. I, I didn't yes. put the two together. <laughs> so BBB. Okay, I, sorry, I, I see brain benders banter. I, I apologize, BBB. Welcome to the team. Welcome to the family. <laughs> uh, and Jim's camera at dawn agrees with you, Ron and Al. You are correct. I have what? my... Compact discs loaded to my phone, and I just play those. There are still a few stations and personalities around the world where there is some personality in radio, but it's nothing like it used to be in the heyday back in the 70s and 80s and 90s, maybe. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Now it's just like very generic, and that's why I think people just have too many choices, and you can make your own playlist and play what you want to hear. It could be a mix of everything, too. It could be country. You can listen to opera, country, soul, everything in one playlist. That's true. You can. And no radio station ever did that. Top 40 was about as close as we got to that because Top 40 was the best of every genre in the 70s and 80s. Then it got more just pop, just rock, took country out. Well, you know, small, time, small town radio stations, like in the mornings, they might play country. And middays, uh, they might play something. In the afternoons, they played rock and roll. The first station I worked at, they played country in the morning. The big band shows were in the middle of the day and soft, you know, cont- adult contemporary. Right. And I, I came on at three o'clock after I got out of high school and went on at three and played top 40 rock. And it was great. It was like in my hometown radio, Rock Mart, Georgia, a small 5,000 watt AM station. And, you know, that was really when radio was a lot of fun. Now, I never worked for a radio station that had, you know, different formats of the day. The right. first station I worked for was a country station. And I knew absolutely nothing about country music because I didn't like it. But it was a chance to be on the radio. This is in my hometown of Wilmington. But everybody wanted to work at the top 40 station. So eventually I ended up over at the top 40 station. But uh, just to get a job playing uh, music on the radio. I, it was a country station, but it, over the years I started liking country. Okay. Since I worked in it for so many years at kick. So it's okay. But country music back then was a lot better than it is now. Country music today is kind of like a country rock. Maybe I would guess. It's is that right. It was. <laughs> what? It's rockier now than it was, but oh yeah, they still have some traditional country artists now that try to bring the old sound back. Yeah. Well, they do. Casey Musgraves, some of the, you know, Chris Stapleton stuff, those kind of artists. Yeah. Well, Ron, to your point, corporations ruined radio. Big corporations like Cumulus, whom Al and I worked for, uh, and uh, <coughs> I heard radio, and then they went bankrupt. <laughs> I agree. They bought out all the little radio stations, all the mom and pop radio stations became part of a chain, and then they just kind of generic everything, and started having one DJ liner card, everything on five stations and you can change your name, but you still, you're still the same. Well, you know, in in Atlanta, uh, WKHX was, uh, uh, when it came on, it was just like a a 10,000 watt FM station. It was W B I E. And it was Um, one guy, the whole day. It was one guy. guy Wilder was his name. Yeah. And I actually went up there when I first came to Atlanta, it was all automated, but he was the only voice of the station and uh, all the music was on cart and uh, reel to reel. And he, uh, he was the voice of the station, but it was W B I E. And then uh, when he passed away, uh, cap cities bought it for $14 million. That's what his wife made off of it. 14 million. Not 14 wow. million. Yeah. That, 
that's the problem with corporate radio is they pay the CEOs millions and millions of dollars and then they cut budgets for promoting and doing billboards and things that would grow the radio stations they own. You know, they're, they're cutting off their nose to spite their face. Well, no, when they first bought WBIE, it was a personality radio station. It was. That was yeah. that was Kix at the time. So Kix was, you know, promoted heavily in Atlanta. It became the one of the number one stations, top stations in Atlanta. And then after it got bought by ABC and Disney, then it went downhill and, you know, merged and just became corporate. Well, the only other uh, country station was uh, uh, WPLO, AM 590. They were the big country station at the time on the AM dial. And uh, 590 is still on today. It used to be Radio Disney at one time when uh, Cap City's ABC bought it. But well, now it's... 106. And well, I say, uh, w, uh, WPLO AM 590 became WKHX. But before that, it was uh, a country station, of course. But now Salem owns it and it's a, a Christian station now hmm. on 590. But uh, WKHX bought WYY, I think, in the early 90s. Uh, YY was a, a Gainesville station. And so right. Gainesville, Georgia, yep. and it was uh, it was a soft uh, rock station. And then uh, a new city bought it and made it country. And so they had it for several years. And it was great because there was a battle between 106.7 and 101.5. It was really good. But eventually ABC bought uh, 106.7. And then that's when they built the new studios on Interstate Parkway where I worked. And you had Rhubarb did mornings on 106.7 and Moby did mornings on Kicks. And they were right down the hall from one another. Hey, Ron, did you, did you work for Kicks when it was owned by Disney? Because Al said he was treated very well. He said Disney was a now, great radio. Ron was there when it was Cap Cities. Yeah, was he, Cap was, City. he, he was there before Cap yeah. Cities merged with ABC. And so, uh, but Ron was not there at the time. Any young kids remember Radio Disney? <laughs> I was yeah. there when it was Radio Disney, and it was uh, Mo or Rocky Marlowe in the morning before Moby. Well, no, Radio Disney didn't come around until later. I thought it was when, on, no, on no. When Disney, 91? ABC, Disney bought they buy? They, no. In now, 91? when Rocky Marlowe was there, when Rocky Marlowe was there, it was country. But what? But it was old country. And Ro Johnny Gray did mornings on the AM, and Rocky Marlowe was on the FM. And then at 10 o'clock. Oh, they were they, simulcast all day. That's right. And then, then they simulcast the rest right. of the day. So that's how that works. A little radio history. Very nice. cool. The, the thing about radio that I don't like, I love radio. I'm not trying to, this isn't a bash radio show. We're going to talk about nostalgia in a little bit. And, no, no and I'm not, you know, I don't new. hate radio at all. It's just not what it used to be. I, I just don't like the excessive commercials. And I used to sell ads. So I know I'm being kind of hypocritical because it put a lot of money in my pocket. But I just can't stand listening to all those ads. But it's the same thing with YouTube. You have ads everywhere. You know, I hate when you're watching a YouTube video and an ad pops up. And interrupts what you're watching. Well, if you pay, uh, you know, to be a subscriber to YouTube, you can do without the commercials. Correct. Just it's like with Disney off. Plus or Netflix, they have an ad supported version and then one that costs more with no well, ad. We have Amazon Prime and they started running commercials, but I pay $2.99 more a month not to have the commercials, which is reasonable. I mean, three bucks more. I'll, I'll do that just not to have the commercials. Pay not to have a commercial. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. It I is. Just, I just watch movies on DVD and they're on our commercials <laughs> or watch them on, uh, you know, stream. What's you BBB? Don't, don't have to watch. What's There's BBB? A, BBB? Right. Yeah. What? Brain bender bender. You mean in chat? How, what do you mean? Well, what did you say, Ron? You watched, you watched what? What did you say? I said I watch commercial free television. I think Al, you saw this comment maybe agreed BBB and got confused. I don't know. Is that what you oh. saw? Is that what you saw? I don't, well, I don't know. I don't know. Well, no. This just well, let, let's take a trip down memory lane because we had some big events in the news this last week. And uh, where were you when the OJ Simpson Bronco chase happened, Al Hardy? <laughs> and I was the right verdict, here. The verdict was, went down. No. Uh, I was working at Kicks. Um, I don't know. I guess I was at home. Probably saw it on TV like everybody else. 
But you know, the OJ trial was really the first trial we watched on television. And now everything, whether it's political or whatever, whether, you know, the Senate or the House is having hearings or, you know, anything that's it's, it's, it's just, you know, got a lot of attention is on television. Uh, like that Murdoch guy, the guy that killed his wife and son in South Carolina. Yeah. I mean, that whole thing was on television. And know? the Menendez brothers around that time, OJ, that whole, the ratings were so strong for CNN and Court TV that all of a sudden all these trials were being covered yeah. like never before. Of course, there was coverage, but before it'd be a sketch artist. Now you had cameras in the courtroom in a lot of these high profile trials. And it produced big numbers, big ratings. That's for sure. Well, it's only the ones that, you know, are high profile, that, you know, maybe, it's, uh, you know, somebody in the media or the movies or whatever. But, you know, uh, just like Robert Blake, you know, he, oh, yeah. you know, I think he killed his girlfriend. Um, I don't know. Was that on TV or not? I can't remember. I don't uh, recall it, it being covered. on TV. Yeah, it was covered. Yeah, it was covered a little bit. I, was, I, I do remember some of it back in the 70s and 80s. Yeah, yeah. And just all through the years, you had like Casey Anthony, you know, and they'd always would have like, especially when there's an attractive woman accused of murder, that always got a mm -hmm. lot of attention. And a That's lot of right. That's right. Jody Aris, not that she was attractive, but that was another example of that. Um, Brain Bender Ban Brain Bender Banner says nothing is the same today. Look at the cars. Nowhere as good as they used to be. The same with food, et cetera, et cetera. It's more expensive. All I know. Man, you aren't right? kidding. I was on the phone with Comcast. Package. Oh, go ahead, Ron. I'm sorry to interrupt you, brother. They give, they give you smaller packages for the same price. They keep making the ice cream smaller and smaller. It's not a half gallon anymore. It's 1.5 liters or 1.5 gallons. Well, you buy a bag of chips, there's nothing but air in it. Yeah, half a <laughs> bag of air. <laughs> Frito Lay is the worst at that. And what I like is when the economy Im improves, a sign of it is when it says now with 33% more. You know, they put it back in some cases. Not all manufacturers do that. But I like when I see that, and it's always when the economy is on mm -hmm. the rebound when that happens. Yeah. But look at toilet paper. Now you have to pay for a triple roll that used to be a normal roll. They don't <laughs> want to go down on the price, but they can make the package a little bigger if the prices go down. That's right. They'll give you some uh, of it back. <laughs> um, someone, uh, And also, we had this comment. Uh, Brain Benders Banter also says, <laughs> is 50 young? And then Sarah, who's on the panel, said 41 is younger. <laughs> yeah. is even younger. <laughs> and then now Jim's camera Don chimes in. He's 67. Well, Brain Bender said he was at boot camp when the OJ oh. trial was going on. I was oh, you're in eighth grade. grade, Sarah, when the OJ verdict went down. Yep. I was in college on yeah. campus. On cool. campus when and they had a big TV screen like in the uh commissary. Saw it right there, saw everyone react to it. I know one thing. Ever since he, he passed away. Uh, there's all kinds of memes on social media, especially TikTok. You know, uh, it's just it, they're funny. You know, uh, yeah. pe people I mean, are, people have a lot of time on their hands. <laughs> they're funny. Yeah, there I, was I, one I'm, that I really liked, but it's got some foul language in it, so I can't repeat it. But it's so <laughs> funny. You know. Well, can you? Why don't you bleep it or censor it? Give give us the censored well, version. You know, it's 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 um, it's a, he's an actor. He's a black guy. He's an actor. I can't remember his name, but you got fire and hell burning behind him, you know, and he's looking down like that. You know, he says, welcome to hell. Uh, Emma <laughs> Effer. All right. Just say Emma Effer. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny as crap. Welcome to hell. Uh, another comment. <laughs> Brain Bender's banter says, I was in boot camp to enter the Navy when the OJ trial happened. <laughs> well, thank you for your service. Sincerely. That's awesome. BBB. Well, can't I can play. I can play that. If you want to see it, you want to see it. Hang on a second. I think I've got, I think I saved it. Let me What's see. crazy is that he started as a Heisman trophy winning football player. Oh, he, he, he was, he was, he was very he was popular like Gunn, and he was you very know? popular. And then all of a sudden he was known for killing his wife, whether he did or didn't. He's still going to be known for that the rest of his life. And a uh, waiter. The rest of the. Uh, it, was, it was a BOGO. Buy one, kill one, kill one, kill another free. Terrible thing. It was just terrible. crazy. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait, <laughs> Wait a minute. We can't believe that. All right. You want to see it? Well, watch this. Welcome to hell, 
God, that's awful, isn't it? <laughs> you can't say it, but you can play it. I like the way you think. Like, but he, this uh, he's an actor. I've seen him before, but he makes some funny videos on TikTok. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, yeah, I've heard, yeah, I've had to stay away from memes because I not I'm not looking to get in trouble. I uh I meme too well and you know. Yeah. <laughs> hey, um speaking of things going up, I was on the phone right before the show with Xfinity Comcast because my promotion or my contract with them expires towards the end of the month. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to renew it or get something comparable, and I get a nice lady in the Philippines. I don't know what it is, I always get the best customer service. Whether it's for a technical or all right, to make a long story short, story. what happened? All right, they said <laughs> uh, we can't. Well, I don't want to do an accent; that's offensive. But I said, she said, we can't do anything until your contract expires. I go, well, that's like at the end of the month on April twenty third, not even the end of the month. Like, well, that is true because they told me the same thing. Call back the day no. of. They that's said. weird. Why can't they renew it before that? They that, they, they won't. They won't do logical. it. They just won't do it. That's a that's a silly policy. That gives me time to shop around with AT and T or cut the cord altogether. Well, I mean, what I did, I cut cable TV completely. The only thing I have from Comcast is the internet. They have and, good internet. And they have really good internet. I think it's like 90 bucks a month. I'll give you an even better deal, Al. I just signed up for prepaid internet with Xfinity, and it's $45 a month. Prepaid? Prepaid internet. You pay $45, you get a modem, and uh, every month you prepay on the same day you started. And you will get 30 days of internet for 45 bucks. That's the best deal I've ever seen. And it's every month. They can't go up on your price. Well, how how is the how is the speed on it? Does your when you're watching television, does I it get buffer? up to 280 speed? I've gotten 300 at one time, but most oh, really? of the time it's around 280. So it's pretty good. Does your does your video ever buffer out? No. Oh. I have no no problems with it. I've had it for one month now. I took T Mobile back. And, and dropped their uh, modem off last week. Right. I tried it for about a year, and it worked good sometimes, and sometimes it was a one speed, and sometimes it was 75 speed. But usually in the morning was great, and the evening was terrible. So I couldn't watch a movie without buffering, so I had to take it back. Even though they said I was in a 5G zone, I was on yeah. 4G service. I never got 5G service. So no, Comcast has great internet. internet, but I remember the days of dial up and it, 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 you know, if you dialed up in the evening or at night, it, it, it was, it was, you know, it was crowded and sometimes you would connect. Sometimes you wouldn't because most people were online at night. You know what I'm saying? That's the reason my speed went down according to T-Mobile. But like I said, I, I thought I would never go back to Xfinity. Uh -huh. And then I found out about this prepaid internet plan. And I said, that's great because they wouldn't let me have the twenty dollar a month plan to come back because that oh. happened in the past and I had problems with them, so I, I canceled the service two years ago and got the other service. Well, but, I've never had a problem except when my modem was dying, my old one, you know, because a couple of times when Chance was here, the modem would just drop out. Remember that, Chance? Oh, but yes. ever since ever ever since I upgraded and got the new modem, I mean, I've never had a problem with Comcast. With prepaid modem, you get a modem in the box. And you hook it up at your house where you had it before, mm -hmm. and the line is already there, so you don't have any problem with it as long as it's, they're already pre-wired. Well, when I got my modem, I have the Xfinity app, and I just I just did it on the phone. But normally, when you get Comcast or Xfinity, you pay for the modem right. on a monthly payment plan. This That's one, what I do. I buy one, my own modem. I have this my one own is different. Yeah. You buy the modem in a box. The modem comes with the prepaid internet service. Your first month is free. So it's included in the price of your modem. Well, how much? How much is the modem? It depends on the store you buy it in. If you buy it at a, a Boost a Mobile Best Store, buy. they sell it for around sixty nine ninety five. If you get oh, it okay. at Comcast, I don't know. I didn't get it at Comcast. I got it from an, an, an another source. So I got well, the it only the only the only the reason I, I I rent my modem is they're constantly updating the speed and stuff. And if you have a modem that's old. It might not. You know what I'm saying? Hold on a second. Your Somebody modem will speak. handle the speed. I wouldn't worry about it. Ron, I bought a modem and a uh, router, like a combo, both, from Best Buy, and I love it. But if you do time. Xfinity, Xfinity will make you pay $30 a month extra to have your own modem. That's In crazy. Order. For the prepay you're talking hey, about specifically. Kind of right? No, for your modem. Right your modem on the regular Xfinity service. I haven't noticed that on my bill. 
they will charge you $30 a month for unlimited service. I haven't noticed that in my bill, sir. If you don't have unlimited service, then you have limited service. You only have 1.2 trigabyte of service from Comcast. If you don't have their modem, if you have your own modem, you'll either pay $30 a month extra or you'll get limited service. That is true. I canceled the service for that reason because they said I went over two, two months and they tried to charge me an extra $100 a month. So it was a bad situation. I didn't want. I've never had, I've never had that problem of going over. Well, I get a, I get a terabyte. I think they said, or something like that. You get 1.2 terabyte of service, but right. that's supposedly 28,000 hours of streaming television, but it didn't work because they said I went over two mm -hmm. months over what I was limited. And I didn't watch that much TV. It's because I do work all day and I only watch in the evenings or mornings. So right. I couldn't have watched that many hours of TV. So either they lied and I didn't really go over and they just wanted to try to charge me for it or something happened and they said I was using it when I wasn't using it. I don't Maybe somebody was stealing your Wi-Fi in the apartment. I don't think so. I think, it, I think it was, like I said, I think it was a problem with the situation. Oh, so I just, like I said, I, I wasn't going to go back to Xfinity, but then I found out about this prepaid program and it works good. Like I said, I have had it for a month. I'm not complaining. $45 I'll tell you a what, I don't, less than the 50 a month I was paying to T-Mobile. I thought I would miss cable TV, but I don't miss that at all. There's so much out there to look at. That, you know. Plus, I have mm -hmm. an antenna, and I have 71 channels over the air I pick up. Just plus, channels, you, right. I, I've got uh, you know the, all those streaming channels. So you, I don't miss it at all. You're a, uh, your watch TV is more than I do. I'm surprised, Al. <laughs> Well, if you don't watch TV, why do you have all that cable stuff? Why do you, if you don't watch it, why do you have it? That's a good point. That's a good point. But I wish you could do a la carte. You know, I, I got to have they, the real family. Look, I mean, you're beating a dead horse. They'll never do that. Yeah, no. Yeah. They should. They, they would not. They would retain more subscribers if they did. No, a because carte. a lot of channels would just go away because they, they wouldn't have the support. Let them. Survival yeah. the, the fittest. That's how this uh, life works. Well, then, Al, if that was, you could explain it that way. Then why are there so many more channels that, today than there are ever before? And they keep adding new channels. And a lot of the pay services they say are going to go away if they don't get more subscribers. Well, that is true. But Chance pays this exorbitant amount of money for cable TV and channels he never watches. It's well, I, 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 I don't know to go to Cody. If he would go to Cody, he could get rid of his cable, but he didn't want to do that. Well, well Cody. He could just go right, let's TV. talk about that. We had a private conversation, yeah. the three yeah. of us, about Cody. Uh, now, now we're not going to talk about Al. Don't mention, the, you know, who who offers it. You know what I'm saying? Don't. We're not going. You're not. You don't like it, Al. You think it's borderline illegal. Let's just let's just open yes. up that discussion. Right. For those who don't know, what is Cody? Ron, what is Cody? Cody is an app available on Google Play Store or on the website Cody.tv. You can. Watch any movie, any TV show, anything ever made if it's online. Everything is on the internet now. So there's add ons. They don't call them channels, they call them add ons. And that's where the legality comes in that Al doesn't like because some of the add ons are iffy as far as legality because they come from other countries and they show movies that are out now in, in the theater. And those may be illegal because, you know, they're not released yet in, in the USA. Well, they Al, are released. I, I just on, texted you, Al. On theatricals, but they're not released, you know, anywhere else. So, but once they come out on DVD, it's fair game because everything online, once it's on a DVD, people put them on their computers and they're all over. Al. Yeah. Yes. You see the, you see the compliment from your OJ video? <laughs> Rainbender's banner says that was great. Thank you, Al. <laughs> That's funny. That's, and, and I mean, I, it, it, there's a bunch of them on TikTok, but that was one of the best, I think. <laughs> and I texted you, Al, something well, when you get a chance. Uh, but yeah, so um, Al, you you think I like the service? I like that app. I think that's pretty cool. I don't care if it's illegal. You know what? How many times have we been ripped off by cable companies? <laughs> and uh, I, I think you know what? I'm glad that someone came up with a way. There's around. nothing illegal about Cody in the USA. It's a streaming service. You can watch movies and TV shows just like Tubi TV, you know, you know Planet TV, you know, all the Pluto. Ones. That's Pluto, Pluto TV. Yeah, Pluto TV. Yeah. Okay. 
yeah, Tubi, Freebie, all those, their apps on your, you know, Roku or Fire Stick or whatever. And that's, I that's and that's basically what uh, Cody is. The Cody app itself has nothing illegal in it. They wouldn't offer it on the Google Play Store or anywhere else if it wasn't, you know, legal. But the problem, like I said, is third party apps that you add to it. If you add something that's possibly illegal in the USA, it would be downloading movies that aren't available in the USA or available you know, for purchase. Well, if, if you, if you, I think if you watch a movie, it's okay. But if you download it, that might be a problem. Well, that's where my nephew got in problems about 10 years ago. His cable company said he was downloading too many movies. And so they threatened to turn his internet off and report right. him to the police or the FBI or whoever the, the movie police uh, are. Something similar happened to us with that, uh, except for it was my cousin downloading video games. Right. Video games is the same thing. It's movies. Well, because it's called copyrighted. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, a oh. lot of the things need a license for those video games that they just don't have. Uh, like uh, flight simulators and stuff like that, for sure, need that. So. Yeah. But you could do that with Cody because it's a lot like Napster was in the old days. Napster, Napster was, was awesome. I mean, I didn't was, say that. It was file sharing for music. This yes. is basically file sharing for movies. So people have movie collections and what they do is they put their movie collections online and people share them online. So that's where the Cody app comes in. You can watch an Elvis Presley movie from the fifties or sixties. You can watch a TV show from the seventies. You can watch Petticoat Junction or. Well, Bell. you know, a Amazon prime has a thing called watch party you know amazon owns twitch and so there's certain movies if you go to amazon prime it'll have watch party you can take that movie and stream it <clears throat> on your twitch channel and have people chime in while you're watching it it's called a watch party but you don't so, need that al i'm just saying this no that, that that's, that's just if you have a, if there's a movie amazon. you know this that's just a movie if you particularly like and some friends of yours like you can you know uh, watch it one night and, and comment on it you know what i'm saying that's all it's called watch party but there's no charge for it it's all free right no it's all free okay it's on Twitch only because, like I said, Amazon owns Twitch. But it's uh, uh it, I, I see it all the time. People well, having watch parties. Amazon also owns uh, Freebie. Freebie. So Freebie shows are shown on there. They show yes. Amazon Prime shows on Freebie to get people to watch them, and then they have to pay for the second and third episodes later. So the new show that just came out, the uh, one of Fallout, they mm -hmm. showed the preview episode on Freebie, so everybody would get hooked on the show and want to see it. And then go to Amazon Prime to watch it. Yeah, but Freebie runs commercials, I do believe. Right. But not on that show. They didn't run any shows. Really? On Fallout. They just ran it straight through. Ron, you keep up with the news. And where all, where all this began was when net neutrality right. passed in the Congress. We were warned about net neutrality. It, it, it allows internet providers to just run wild. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't have any control over them yet. Um, they're, they're trying to take control over internet services now and so it's like after you've let the cat out of the bag how do you put it back in a little bag so that's right uh and we got a comment of course this going back a bit here brain benders banner says so if you read the disclosure it says 5g where available so they take your money to get percentage g 5g i think they meant 5g yeah five is the percent key on the on our keyboard there um let's hit the cap thing all right, so they take your money to get 5G, but don't deliver if you're not in an area that has it. Wow. I was supposedly in an area that had 5G for T-Mobile, but it didn't ever come 5G. They told me that it would be 5G by the end of the year, but it never became 5G. It was always stayed 4. So I wasn't able to get 5G. I took it back. So I wish it would go 5G. Everybody that had 5G, all the videos I watched on YouTube said it was great. 300 speed, no problem. I could have handled that, but all I got was 75 at the best and one at the at the worst. Now, Ron, uh, I don't think we've talked about this yet. Now, it's interesting that you and Al once worked together in country radio at Kicks Country in Atlanta, 100,000 watt station. Well, we met on a movie set. You and I worked as extras on a Disney movie, The Odd Life of Timothy Green. We became fast friends <laughs> and uh, we saw movies together. You, you, you were in a movie club. You we basically would go to pre-screenings for critics. And you had a pass, and you would invite me on occasion. 
uh, movies we worked on specifically right. for the most part. And we meet at Atlantic Station, which is in downtown Atlanta, Regal Theater, whatever. And uh, you called it the Freeloaders Club because there's a lot of people just going there that got access and got free passes to these movies before they even hit movie theaters. Well, 99X fun. had a Freeloaders Club. That was where I got the Freeloader Club. 99X yeah. Freeloader Club gave a lot of movie passes away. And that's when it was at its height when free screenings were going around. But because I'd been in radio for 20 years, I knew that radio stations gave away movie passes and there were ways to get free movie tickets. So when I was in radio, I got them just because I worked at the station. And then after I got out of radio, I got them because I knew the radio stations gave them away. So I just called them and found out where they were giving them out at and would go pick up a pair of tickets. So wow. I was and, always a big movie fan. So I liked movies for that reason. And I know what you mean, because I worked at Cumulus for years and I got so many free tickets to concerts that I, I'll never pay for another concert. Yeah, it's concerts hard too. to it's hard yeah. to when you got them for free, like good seats for so many years. It's so hard to pay for it. My friend uh, Hunter wanted to see Judas Priest, and I'm like, man, they got to be in their 70s. I don't want to see a metal band in their 70s. Now, Rolling Stones, <laughs> that's one thing. That's one thing. Mick Jagger, he's 80. He, he still got it, in my opinion. But I don't want to oh. see some heavy metal act that's up there like that in age. I'm not an ageist. That's just not, and I'm certainly not going to pay to see that. No offense, Hunter, if you're watching. Uh, anyway, he was like, "Come on, man, just just get fifty dollars seats." I'm like, "No, I'm not going. I don't. I don't have any interest in that." No. I get a few concerts, but it's got to be pretty special to pay for them. A lot of money. I don't yeah. pay much. I pay fifty dollars tickets or twenty five or thirty five dollars tickets. I don't. I don't. I don't need to sit on the front row anymore. I can sit in the middle of the audience or in the back. <laughs> One of the most popular concerts. I, I couldn't believe it. It was at Chastain Park. I never would have expected to see this kind of a crowd and a crowd that was into it. It was air supply, air supply. And one yeah. of the two dudes can sing and the other one can't. His voice is cracked. Yeah. The grannies like to rock, <laughs> but uh, no, it was, it, it was a pretty, pretty good crowd. I mean, it was younger people, but mostly middle age, not senior citizens or anything, nothing wrong with that. But uh, I was just amazed. And I only went cause it was free. I went with, uh, with somebody, I went with my date and uh, it actually wasn't Thanks, bad. Boy. It actually was not a bad concert. I was, right. I was on the phone. Yeah. What did I miss out on? What concert you're talking about? Uh, I was <laughs> just talking about air supply, but I, I, I was talking about how Ron and I met. We met on a movie set. How you got you guys worked in radio. I met I him on him, a movie I met him set. on the radio. Next. Yes. Yes. But we got a, we uh, well, got a comment. I, uh, I, we uh, what? We got a comment. Can we get the spelling of that app, Ron? For Cody? Yeah. How do you spell it's, that? It starts with a K. K O D I. And it's available at Cody.tv. Thank the you. website, or you can go to the Google Play Store if you have Google Play on your uh, TV or your phone or your tablet, and you download it there. Well, Sarah, I guess if, ahead, you have a, if, if you have a smart TV, you can just download it on your television. Some some smart TVs will let you download it. Like, again, it's in the Google Play Store, or you have to have an app to download it from a third party, which is a website like Cody.tv. Mm -hmm. If you can go to the website on your browser. Uh, look at this. Brain Bender's banner says, I only pay $39 a month unlimited. And they supplied the modem. I've never had an issue. All right. Who what was service, that? Yeah. Who was that? What service is it, though? I mean, what well, service is that? I'm, I'm, I'm behind in the comments, so let me see. And Jim's camera at Dawn in North Carolina, your home state, Al, says $29 mm -hmm. a month here. Let us know who, who are but what providers? service is that? They can't be Comcast. Calm down. Well, they can be. Go. If they're still they, watching, there, there was a thirty dollar off program called the American Connectivity Program, and people did get thirty off their fifty nine ninety five package, and that brought it down to twenty nine. So, but I think that program just ended. So a lot of people are going to see a lot of jumps in their bills in the next month. Or yeah, so. but think about it: is they add all these junk fees, and they're, they're they're cracking down on that. If you look at your Comcast bill, you have a broadcast fee, you have this, and you have that. There's like, you know, $25 of junk fees on there. Flag on the field. Brain Bender's banner has Xfinity. That's who I'm trying to negotiate with, Al. That's who you have. Well, how if do you, you get it so cheap? How, how what do you state get it are you so in, cheap? Brain? BBB, what state? She pays $39 a month for Unlimited. Do you have the cell phone with them? Maybe that's it. It's a bundle deal. If they you love just bought it for the first time, it's $20 a month. They do have a deal on television for $20 right now, but that's a first-time buyer. That's not someone who's had it 
for in the past. They don't offer that. That's for new subscribers. That's a new subscriber price. So yeah. maybe these people are new subscribers. We don't know. If you get but they, if, if they are, it'll, year, if, if they are, it'll go up. up. It'll go up after right. the first year. If it's 69 or 89 a month. It, it's just like YouTube TV. You get the first month for 45 bucks, then it goes to $79. Right. Uh, Jim, Jim's camera at Dawn has Spectrum for that 29 a month. That's who Danny has, our friend Danny, friend of the show. Danny I, heard Spectrum, I heard Spectrum sucks. It does, 100%. It's do. awful. They go no, down. Spectrum. Anytime, there's a storm, anytime there's a storm, their servers go down in the yeah. Gulf or something. Um, well, I mean, Sarah, goes, Sarah, do you have Spectrum? Yes, I do. Out here, we have Spectrum. After uh, Verizon sold off their, uh, you know, uh, cable stuff. The thing about it is, Sarah, your your podcast and stuff, I've, you, they never go down unless, uh, you know, you do something you're not supposed to. Like Chance said, he took you down the other night. I, I played a clip <laughs> well, and it went down the stream. That, well, okay. Uh, that happens all the time because copyright. And also, I kept poking him to play the thing. So, at the end of the day, it just happens. <laughs> <laughs> Jim's been teasing about that. Jim's camera at dawn. But uh, uh, Brain Bender's Banner BBB is in California. You guys were asking where oh, you at. Okay. Yeah, so. she's in Northern California and I'm in Southern. So perfect. Oh. And 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 to answer my question, nope, my sales with ATT. So it's not a bundle deal with Xfinity. That's an introductory offer then to Ron's point. Right. It's and Al's point. So, it, right. so we're not to burst your all's bubble. <laughs> get ready to get jacked up from these uh well, I, I know, I had, was, anyway. I'm surprised California would have a twenty nine dollar deal, but ooh, correction <laughs> corner, uh brains uh, is off at Xfinity for six years, so it's not introductory. So um we're all wrong. Well hmm. uh, Northern California and Southern California, everything is very different in all regards. So it's like my uh, being another state, really. Is it night and day? Okay. Mm, oh yes. Oh yes. They and, <laughs> think I've better health care out there than I do. So that doesn't beat that. And Jim with uh, uh, Spectrum says, mine is internet only for 29 a month, and I'm in my third year. So, again, not introductory, apparently. I used to have a deal with Xfinity, and every year it went up, I would call them on the phone and speak with customer service. And what they would do is ask me what I wanted to pay, and I would say $30 a month or $40 a month. They would give me that deal, but now they don't do that anymore. When I called in the last two times I tried to call them, when it went up, they didn't want to discuss it anymore. They either I either had to pay it or cancel. Hmm. So I canceled and I went to T-Mobile. Like I said, they don't want to discuss that. Now maybe well, he has a, a, a customer service guy in his town that's willing to do that because they're losing a lot of customers. Xfinity, Comcast, yeah. whatever. Everybody yeah. is losing cable TV customers. They and are. The whole, I mean, I cut my cable. I don't the have whole cable TV. Is cutting cable now, so people don't need that. There are ways to go through the apps, the free apps, the Cody, everything all added together and save money on your cable bill. So cable te te television is a thing of the past. There will it be is. A, a little well, bit. Bill Comcast, touched with that out when we saw him. Remember Bill Tush says cable's long dead. Well, you know, uh, Comcast Xfinity has a deal. They have a deal if you, you don't make, it, it depends on your income. If you make below a certain wage, they will take thirty dollars off your bill a month. But in that other just words, ended, Al, that program just ended in March. It did. Yes, oh. it ended in March, and so people will be seeing a jump of thirty dollars in their bill as soon as that runs out. In so April, they didn't get the funding. The Congress April did not. May, the, Congress the funding did not ran out. Give them the funding ran. for that thirty dollar. Well, you know, I applied for that, and yeah. they said I didn't qualify. You made too much money if you make more than a certain limit. Of yeah, 18, I did. They said I didn't qualify. Twenty thousand a year. I think you. You don't qualify yeah. if you make over a certain income. Level. Yeah. Well, I didn't qualify. Or I tried. I tried stamps. twice. You yeah. have to be on food stamps, or you have to be on a EBT program, or oh. app or something like that. Government cheese. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's where you can get that thirty dollars off. So that program, Ron, is gone. They have done away with it. According to everything I read just this week about it, it has just been canceled. Okay, so well, that, I, th I think that I think that, that, now that or will be stopping in the next month. The next that month. was a that was a government funded thing, I think. Yeah, but you know what? You know how the government works; they always re up it right at the last minute. You know, when it comes like when, when it comes to they're not re upping it right now. The, the Congress yeah. isn't discussing anything to give money away. No, it's got to go to Ukraine. Sorry, right. I went yeah, there. We'll give money to Ukraine <laughs> or Israel or somewhere overseas, but America is not getting any more money. Um, let's see. Uh, the Californians are talking in chat, meaning my flock 
and mm -hmm. BBB brand. She said, I like this comment. She says, we are like meaning Northern and Southern California. We're like two States, two different States. And exactly. she said, they're trying to make Northern Cali state of Jefferson. What does that mean, Sarah? What did you say? Like a separate. Do you state see the comment the on the screen? I don't understand yeah. what Jefferson is. What What does that well, mean? Well, I, I, I was I was thinking that she meant that like the, the Jeffersons, like uh, you know, like uh, you know, the cartoon. Yeah, or, no, that's not right. That's not an. You know, what? I don't even know. Listen, it, I can't break. Norman Lear spent off at all. Yes, thank you. That's what I meant to say. That, what? That, that, I was talking. I'll shut up. What What did you say, Ron? It's Thomas Jefferson, the president. The state. Oh, okay. They're to change it to state and give it to state oh. of Jefferson. Make it Not Jefferson the state. state of the Jeffersons. Sorry, BBB. I'm a little slow. Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> the free You're freedom from Georgia. of America. It's okay. Yes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get you back for that one, girl. I believe you said something backstage before we started, so I, I think we're even. <laughs> oh, I, 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 hey, I didn't. <laughs> I, that's not what my opinion, and I'm not going to name <laughs> any names. That's something I heard um, about your voice. Now, let's see. Jim's camera at Dawn said mine just went up to twenty nine dollars. It was twenty five. I can handle that increase, but everything's that's going bad. up. That's what, I'm not trying to make this a, a bitch session about the <laughs> terrible economy we're in, but everything is going up. I mean, yeah. it's, it's 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 getting out of control. Even the streaming service. You're talking about how everyone's cutting the cable. Well, now the streaming Disney is leading the way of the streaming increase and netflix. Canceling streaming services too well you yeah. know netflix went up uh last year too they Prime? went from i was i was uh i was out for netflix uh, streaming i was paying 9.99 now it's 10.99 well that's not that bad that's not that bad but they went up above December 16.99 you got hulu and espn and disney all in one package a bundle a bundle deal yeah nah i i've got enough i'm not i'm like i got you know netflix and prime that's enough for me Plus, I mean, I like Tubi TV. Tubi TV is really good. You know, I watch Tubi a lot. Yeah, BBB, you have to be, it seems like these days you have to at least have a six-figure income to uh, have a life. That's for sure. She says, I never had a problem, but I don't have cable. I only have internet. I make 80K a year, so it isn't for me. It isn't income for me. Well, oh, yeah, they she's, say talking, even she's talking about the program. She's talking about the, what, the internet program y'all were talking about. Well, even to buy a house today, they say you have to make a six-figure salary to be able to afford yep. it. Yep. That's Aren't crazy. you glad you bought your house when you did, Al, back in 88? Bought my house in 1988, yeah. And the, the value's probably gone up, up, up. Um, I, I for When I bought my house, I paid, I'll tell you, I paid $79,000 for it. And I just got my property tax. And now they value my house at 318000 Oh, wow. Wow. So uh, that means my that means my property tax goes up. Sure. That's yeah. probably why they do that, man. That's why it's they just, do it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, BBB says, OK, they're trying to divide the state, the northern part of California and make it the state of Jefferson. OK, thanks for clarifying. Thank you. Thank you. That reminds me of that movie that opened on Friday called Civil War. And uh, it's an A24 production. Uh, Amazon owns A24. And they make a lot of boutique movies and art films. But anyway, this movie uh, is about Texas succeeding from the Union. And uh, everybody, and there's like a Civil War brewing between Texas and California. And it's doing really well at the box office. I think I might go see it. Just Have you heard on Friday and maybe one of the highest grossing pictures this year yeah who's in Friday it sold out on thursday well I, I, uh christian dunn i heard yeah that uh girl you like she's in it uh christian Chris, dunce yes she's in it from spider-man which will be out in theaters the 2002 right. original toby mcguire spider-man is going to be in theaters along with all the but Sony it's it's making a lot of money and so uh it's outpacing now that godzilla movie that came out and uh plus ghostbusters it's just you know well, it must be killing. good uh, my flock look wants you to know, Al, when the year you bought your house in 88, she was in first grade. <laughs> God, I feel so old. Of course, she's in the room on the panel. I'm, I'm talking so much. I can't let her have a word in edgewise. Jeez. Sorry. Yeah, girl. shut up. You know, <laughs> one year old. <laughs> oh, oh, well. Well, yeah. so, but I, you know, I'm comfortable here. I mean, I, well, the house comes in upkeep. You know, you have to do that sort of stuff. I, I put a roof on it a few years ago and I had to I put a that. new, had a new, put a new HVAC system in cause my other one died. And so, I mean, 
you know, that was six thousand dollars. The roof was six thousand. So, I mean, it, it costs money to keep a house up. That's for sure. Hey, all but, you new people. But it's cheaper. It's cheaper than paying twenty five hundred dollars rent for a one bedroom apartment. Right, right. Hey, yeah. um, a lot of new people uh, may not know you had a couple trees crash into your roof, Al, which is why you had to replace the roof in part. Yeah. It wasn't just for routine maintenance, and you had a big leak right there in your studio, and almost all your gear got you electrocuted. It was terrible. But oh um, good thing I had this stuff turned off. But anyway, uh, I had a yeah. tree fall on my house also just about nine years ago. It fell on my house and destroyed my kitchen. It just, you know, knocked the kitchen cabinets off and it was terrible, you know, and to uh, replace everything and to get it fixed was over $10,000. Of course, my uh, insurance sure. paid for it. But right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. It, I was, it was just that was a, it was terrible for a while, you know. Had a big hole in my kitchen. For, you could see outside. It was terrible. Hey, Al, but, you, you went, I'm not going to mention names, but you went with a friend last Sunday to see a movie on their birthday uh, or the day before the birthday. What movie did you see? It has something with the, the late devil. Night, late Night with the Devil. D was it any good? It's very good. It's based on a talk show in 1977. It's kind of like based on a Johnny Carson show. You had this host that was, you know, and, it, and they used the same kind of bumper music. It looks just like television late night shows in 1977. And this talk show host is really popular. So he has this lady on the show that has written a book about exorcism. And she has this girl on that has been exercised. Well, anyway, uh, as it goes on, he has a psychic on there, you know, and they make fun of him. It, it's just, it's, it's basically a, 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 an hour and a half talk show. And what's cool about it, they shot it in the one three, three format. Like if you're watching television, it's a smaller picture. And like when they go to a commercial break, which you don't see, it's in black and white. And you see behind the scenes of the producer coming in and blah, 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 and uh, talking to the audience. And then it comes back and it's got a slide. Welcome back. You know, the music It's like Carson used to have. And so he has this lady on and she brings a, a, a girl on who was once possessed, but she still is in some sorts. And so what happens is she gets possessed on the show and starts talking crazy stuff like, ah, rah, 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 you know, and so, and then they go to a commercial break and the producer comes up. He says, the ratings are through the roof. Everybody's watching. And so uh, basically what happens is to make a long story short, she wreaks havoc on everybody. And, and of course she turns into the devil, not looking like the devil, but she gets possessed and people start dying on the show and stuff. It's really kind of clever in a way. So it's, it's rated not, G. Rated G. It's a family movie. It's not a family movie. <laughs> but <laughs> but does her head spin around? Does her head spin around? Like in The Exorcist? No, no. But it, it kind of splits open or something. It doesn't spin around <laughs> or anything. But you know, in the end, how the movie ends, you see the talk show host, and he's back again with all the guests. But basically. He ends up getting killed, but he's in hell and he relives that over and over and over again. One of the sickest things I saw in a recent movie was in the Joker, which we saw, Al, when uh, the Joker shoots the uh, talk show host right in the face right there. when they're Yeah, I him. saw that. Yeah. That but, rude. you know, and, and uh, Late Night with the Devil, it's um, it's it's an indie film. It's not to everyone's taste. And it didn't open in many theaters at all. But um I'm sure it'll be streaming somewhere, but it was different. I didn't dislike it. I enjoyed it actually, but you know, it was it, like an agenda where they like trying to like uh, glorify the devil and all that. No, Not it really didn't do that. You know, it, it really didn't do that at all. Uh, so and there wasn't like that they hated you out on Facebook. Sorry, go ahead. I'll, I'll look on the, Facebook. And see what it is. There wasn't, there wasn't that much devil stuff in it, to be honest with you, except near the end of the show when she, when she releases hell on them. There, excuse me. There's a scene in it where she's sitting in the chair, and the chair starts coming up. Oh yeah, and she starts talking just like this. You're gonna, gonna, you know, <laughs> and just talking like you know the devil, <laughs> just, just like, and her eyes just get real red, and you know. What's the name of the movie? It says Catherine Lisa um, Zermule. I'm probably not pronouncing her name correctly. That's the lady who said, "Hey, to you, Al. Do you know Catherine, Al?" 
Uh, yes, I knew Catherine. She's married to uh, Bill, a friend of mine, who used to be a disc jockey at Kicks too. Um, the name of the movie is Late Night Late Night with the Devil. Ah, it's called Late Night with the Devil because it's based on a late night talk show. You you remember? I I don't know, Sarah, if you were around, but did you watch Johnny Carson or David Letterman or you know Uh, any? I I I caught the you know tail end of uh, uh, Carson back in the day. Very very little. uh, Really? Yeah. Well, you you know, ten years old. You know, when Mm -hmm. when they went to a commercial break, they had a slide up. You know, you know, and then it had music playing. The you know, Doc Severson of the band was playing the music, and when it came back, it had the slide. You know, and he would go, "Welcome back." Mm -hmm. You know, our guest today, so and so, so and so. And the set is sort of like a Carson set, but he doesn't have it in the movie. He doesn't have a desk. He just has some chairs. So, programming note: uh, in thirty minutes, Ron has to duck out. He's going to watch Billy Joel in concert on CBS tonight. As we're live. Right, Ron. Nice. Yeah, I'm waiting for that one. That's a great, great so, show. So okay. you can just, well, Billy, you, can, you can just, you know, when you need to go, if we're still going, we we may wrap in half an hour. But if not, we'll if see. we get on a roll or somebody comes in, you can just excuse yeah. yourself and you know. But anyway, Your last my show favorite three my, hours. <laughs> my favorite song by Billy Joel is probably you've never heard of it. It's called The Entertainer. Uh, and of course, I like Piano Man, but The Entertainer was a is a great song he did. And it didn't get a lot of airplay, but I really do like that song, The Entertainer. It, nothing like uh, The Sting Entertainer, right? No, 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 you know? no. No, um, he sings. No, no. Uh, and Catherine says, I will love to see that movie, Al. Well, you know, it's uh, it, like I said, it didn't play in many theaters in Atlanta. It was, uh, I think it played at the Terra. Uh, it played at a couple of AMC theaters here, and that's it. Um, it's, it's now available on Cody. I just pulled up Cody. It's- okay. <laughs> so if you want to watch TV, if you live in the country. You can well, watch it. You watch it on. Co- You'll like it. It's it's, it's it's a throwback to the late night talk show days. You know what? I was watching. I, I was working on the movie Tulsa Kings just as background. I haven't done background work, which is extra work, in over ten years. But I I did it on a Sly Stallone project, Tulsa Kings season two. And while we were waiting to go to set, I was just talking about how with this guy I met on the set that I just seen the new Godzilla movie, Godzilla X Kong. Yeah, but and you didn't watch all of it. it. No, I walked out of it halfway through. I did just not. I heard, I it, was, heard it. it was terrible. It wasn't great, but it, it, I had things to do. It was one of the main reasons I left. I wanted to get Regal popcorn, but that's another story. Regal's my favorite uh, movie theater popcorn. So he goes, oh, what? oh, really? And he pulls out his laptop and he pulled it up. Perfect quality. It's still in theaters and he pulls it up on his computer from start to finish and i'm like yep there's the opening of the movie and kong uh, i know where he got that half. from i i used to all the screen blood goes I, used all to, over, all over. I used to frequent that site that the site's in germany so they get a, around you know copyrights or whatever but a lot of times on those sites it'll have digital copy or it'll have camera copy and I, you know, I never watched the camera copy because they're so bad, you know, but if you, you know, the digital copies are, you know, much good. Remember so, the yeah. old days, because we're all old farts. Remember when you'd get a bootleg videotape? I remember getting Pulp Fiction in 1994 when it was still in theaters mm-hmm. and it had like the Japanese or Chinese subtitles at the bottom. And you saw the guy getting up to get popcorn to go to the bathroom. It was just a camcorder job from like the back row. Remember that mm-hmm. people would camcord and bootleg a movie. Recording the movie screen. I had an yeah, a copy of X Men. The first X Men movie. Oh, there was a lot of you know. Year nineteen ninety nine. There was a lot of uh, re, uh, reduction sixteen millimeter prints of new movies too. Man, I got a bandsaw print of a movie, um, Phenomenon, with John Travolta, nineteen ninety six, and like one of I the reels was fine. The, re- the bandsawed Sarah, and for those who don't know, was when someone cuts the film making it virtually unplayable on a projector or it's now what they, what they do when, after I goes when films incorporated was here in Atlanta, I used to borrow 16 millimeter films from them all the time. And so I knew the, the manager there. So they would have, you know, when a movie got old enough, when they got a new print, they would take the older print and put it on a cord and stack it up. And they have a, a bandsaw there and they just take it and run it through the saw and sh- cut it in half. <laughs> And so that's why they call it bandsaw print. But you can, if you get, you can splice it back together, but it'll be tons of splice and it's really not watchable. But what they did, 
uh, old prince, they sent them up to a place in Tennessee where they uh, melted the film down and they made plastic containers out of it. They made, you know, like plastic Coke bottles or plastic Pepsi bottles. All that stuff is recycled and they would use the uh, the, the uh, poly, not the polyester, but the uh, 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 well, some of the polyester prints they could reuse, but it was acetate a lot of times. They would just, anyway, they would melt it down and make plastic out of it. Al, see what I'm holding up? What? A film reel. Just saying. Continue. We know what film reels look like. A lot of people don't. They don't come that way anymore, do they? <laughs> no, they don't. Well, I mean, there are a lot of people that collect film still do, yeah. I mean, I, I got a bunch of film left, too. Not as much as Chance. I used to have a lot of film, but I sold it all. Not all of it. You still have a lot of film. I do. You're, uh, what's the name of your YouTube channel? I know a lot of people are watching it, but for those who are watching on Facebook Live or Twitch, your YouTube channel is Al Hardy Entertainment. You post no, them. it's not. It's Al Hardy Entertainment. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Hardy Entertainment hyphen Al's Place. Well, I'm glad you corrected me. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Subscribe. I need, <laughs> Go there and subscribe. I need subscribers. I'm also on Twitch as Movie Albert. But what's in it for you is Al puts rare film that's in the public domain on his YouTube channel. And it's a perfect transfer, almost using that app you use. Well, yeah. uh, Sarah saw it, but I put uh, scenes from uh, Reefer Madness up. I got a print of that. And I put that up the other day. Yeah, that was that was freaking great. You ever see Reefer? Let me do that. You ever see Reefer Madness, the whole movie? Uh, no, I have not because uh, I'm not blessed or something. And if I do get to see it, I'm just going to make fun of it. I can't wait. <laughs> Well, it's not. I think it's available on YouTube, so you can watch the whole thing. But anyway, uh, I have a print of it. It only runs an hour and eight minutes, but it was produced in 1936 about the evils of marijuana, and it's it's yeah. kind of it's kind of campy, actually. It's uh, extremely campy. Like nobody in the history of the world ever gets high and jumps on a window. It's not a thing yeah. with weed. They but eat you all see, the food, sure. <laughs> but you see, you see, you know, high school kids, they look too old to be high school, in my opinion. But Ooh, they, yeah. they, they, they have a party one night. And they're all going. Yeah. Oh, and the guy gets bug eyes. Remember that scene? Yeah. The guy gets bug eyes. Well, there's a scene in it where one of the guys, he's he's high and he's driving a car and he hits a he hits a pedestrian. It doesn't kill them. But then the, then the law comes after him and he gets into real trouble. But he got really hooked. And at the end of the movie, they sent him to an insane asylum. <laughs> <laughs> of course they did. Sam it's like Al. a Dungeons and Dragons movie with uh, 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 yeah. Tom Hanks. He goes yeah. to the mental hospital oh, yeah. because yeah. Dungeons and Dragons. I'm like, oh, what? Al, you have a kind offer. Look at the screen from uh, Brain Bender's Banter. She says, I just hit 30.5 thousand subscriptions on YouTube. I can feature your channel, Al, like I did for Sarah last week. Oh, that would be great. Hardy Entertainment. It's H A R D E E. Hyphen Al's place, and mine is the nostalgic pod blast. Hint, hint, hint. If you'd be <laughs> I'll make sure that we all get connected, guys. You know the thing yeah. I do is I'll, the I'll subscribe to uh, Brain right now, or, or as soon as the show's over with. I will. I will too. I, I haven't, yeah. but I will. I, I will. Okay. Well, I, I tell Brain to post his website. I'll do the, link the, chat. the link, yeah. Let me you do can't. the link. Nobody in your chat is wrenched, so nobody can post anything in chat for you. I know, but that's because Al's thing. But I can do it, but, though. Can uh, I? Can't I post okay. her, her link, Sarah? Can I not post her link? You don't, you're not chat? blue in here either. But I'm in huh? his, I'm his partner in the, in the StreamYard thing. What does yeah. the StreamYard yeah. have to do with YouTube? Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. You're, okay got what's it. that? What's, what's that? What do you mean? Do you Brent, have to be. You have... Go ahead. Well. I'll shut up for a change. <laughs> You have to go to the YouTube side to wrench people up. It's not a streamer. Oh, YouTube okay. Side. Okay. Thank you, BBB. Um, she says, I'll have Sarah send me links. Perfect. Okay. But I'll, send me her, Sarah, when we're done. I want to subscribe immediately to uh, Brain Bender's Banter on YouTube. Are you Thank sure? You. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll take care of business like I do. 30,000 subs is nothing to sneeze at. 30.5 thousand. Well, you could seize at it, but that would be weird. That'd be weird and stupid. I have a friend on YouTube. He does diving videos and stuff, and he's got mm -hmm. over a million subs. But he has paid for those. You can pay. Listen, I'm telling you, I'm not. We're not going to mention names. And, 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 no, no. But we're he's been on. Fa he's been on YouTube not as long as I have. 
but dude, he was on it. Like you told me overnight, he got 30,000 subscribers. That's right. Not right. Now I know it's niche. There are a lot of people in the mm -hmm. diving community, mm -hmm. but there's also social media influencer agencies that right. take dinero money for likes, phony likes, phony views, phony subs. Oh, well, you well, well, so so can equate to higher ad revenue for well, the, let's, uh, let Sarah talk. You're talking too much. Sam. Am, all right. The mic is there. Well, uh, no, I just I just read her uh, her comment there. She said she'd been doing this for seven months. I've been doing this for four years, and that's where I've gotten. Well, you got uh, a thousand, Sarah. About a thousand. I, I don't got a thousand. What? About a thousand. I think oh, Sarah's got about eight hundred and some, don't you, no, Sarah? She's, she's over nine. I, nine. I got nine hundred and twenty-one last I looked. That's good. That's good. Yeah, it but like I said, I've been doing this for four years. Well, yeah, it as yes and no. It depends on everything, but. At the end of the day, <laughs> well, that and also people that you work with, you know, if you work well with them, then you're going to all succeed better. But if you don't, then you're all just going to not do it. And that's what it was before. Yeah. Teamwork. 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 I love networking. My favorite thing. Yes, networking. I'm a that. salesman. That's networking 101. That's my business. That's well, what that is. I never networking. went to school or anything, but that I, I like that kind of stuff. So I'm good at it and I like to do it. Oh, BBB, I was not inferring you were one of the ones. I'm talking about the one Al specifically was talking about. I know that guy's paying out of someone else's pocket, by the way, um, for those subscriptions. And we're not going to mention names, so Al, don't get antsy. But that particular case with the million subscribers, that's hogwash. But you do it. I guess you got to do what you got to do and more power to him. I, no, I yeah. He's well, a, he, I'm he, not going to mention names. He's a financial advisor, and most of those guys are crooks. They just don't. <laughs> no, I, I've known him a long time, and he's always, you know, uh, he used to do a show at 1067. Anyway, uh, that I, I, well, I now produced. you were trying to identify. Let's not. No, no, no. I'm not going to give any names. Anyway, yeah. he, he came over here and recorded some shows over here, too. You're really identifying him now. <laughs> don't do it. So. You're not meaning to, but you're kind of giving some major hints. <laughs> hey, what a, hey, I will say, I can tell you about what about my financial advisor? One of my clients is on the run from the FBI. Um, he was on my station and then WSB radio. He was a paid, uh, sponsor, financial advisor, and, uh, they've not caught him. I went to Braves games with him, like front row behind home plate. He's a young guy. I think he's Sarah's age or younger than Sarah, maybe. And, uh, <laughs> man, remember that guy, Al? Yeah, I remember him. Yeah. Hey, Ron, Ron gosh, how you doing? You've been kind of quiet over there. Yeah, it's, I'll shut up. Well, we're not it, talking it, about it. movies or radio or anything. Yeah, you know, it's, it's just like, you know. Internet is the world of uh, fantasy internet, but I, yeah. I don't want to get into some of the, you know, crap stuff about the internet. There's a lot of crap on the internet, but. Uh, well, there there is. There's good stuff yeah. on the radio, on the internet, too. So I, I just prefer to talk about nostalgia stuff, and you're not talking nostalgia. Well, let's get back on track, then. Let's, let's get, get back, back on our <laughs> subject, or I got to go watch some. Billy Joel well, here. I'm, you got well in, in 19 minutes or less. Right. Yeah, I know. It starts at eight, right? Not eight thirty. You said eight o'clock. I right? think it's eight o'clock on CBS after 60 minutes. Is this a, is this a concert he did like at uh, Madison Square Garden or something, or where, where was this at? He does one up there about every month. I think he does a monthly. Oh, okay. Garden, but this is one he did there, and they've taped it recently. I, I believe. I don't think it's well, gonna be a live show. I, I don't think he'll do the song The Entertainer, but if he does, it's a great tune. I'm sure he'll do Piano Man, you know, all the classics. But uh I, I've always liked Billy Joel. I thought he was I thought he's super talented and I have always liked his music. Yeah, the best hey, song hey. was him and Elton John together and they went on the road together and did the Piano Man tour and it was it was great. Ron, hey, the you, concert starts at nine. Oh, nine so o'clock. Oh, well, they yeah. moved it. Okay. I don't think well, they're looking hey, right well, here on a press release. Hey Ron, have you ever seen um Billy Joel and in, in, in concert yourself. Yeah, with Elton John at the Phillips Arena. Yeah, yeah. I just told you they, were, they, they were there. To, they were there together. together. They did a tour together, the Piano Man tour, where they well, both played each other's songs. They played duets together, and they played hmm. separate, separate shows together. Hmm. Now I've seen eight. I've seen Elton John twice. I, first time I saw him was at the Omni, and the second time was at Phillips Arena. But right. I didn't I didn't realize they did a tour. I don't remember that. When, yeah, what year was that? We were together probably 15 years ago. Oh, wow. Let's talk about some nostalgia then, roundtable about music. Okay. Let's let's talk about some songs that were better as remakes than the original. So put your thinking caps on or live versions that sounded better than the original. I'll give you an example while you're thinking. Welcome to the Chance Show. No, no, no. I'm just coming up with some ideas. <laughs> nostalgia, trying to get back on track. Peter Frampton. Frampton well, we're, talking, we're talking about Billy Joel and concerts, and you want right, to well, switch gears already? I'm, 
I, yeah. I'm yeah. just saying that then keep talking about what you're talking about, but think just be thinking. Why don't you just eyes. why don't you just be quiet for a little bit? All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. You know, so you know, you, you give chance yeah, an inch, and you give chance an inch, and he takes a mile. Well, we did this with Sarah on her channel and TD, and it was a fun topic. Okay, you know, I, but, I was just gonna say, Billy Frampton comes alive. I don't remember the actual studio version of anything on that. I remember, do do you feel like we do? All I remember is the live version. Do you guys remember the studio version of that song? I don't. You were DJs. I don't know if there was one. Yeah, I know. I don't think there was. <laughs> That's kind of strange. But he did Frampton Comes Alive with a lot of new songs. They ah. became hits. They became hits. Yeah. Hey, Sarah, what uh, have you ever, what concerts have you seen that, that you, really that uh, stood out for you? Have you? Did you go to concerts back in the day or still do? Well, yeah, but I mean, concerts have stood up for me for are a lot of different reasons than for you guys. But there was one concert that I went to. In the high desert somewhere, I forget where. I don't, I don't even remember what it was called now. Mm -hmm. It was like maybe Project Re Revolution or something like that. I can't remember. Right. Anyways, and it had like a bunch of you know up and coming bands in it. it had Corn uh, and uh, uh, Lincoln Park and <laughs> Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Anyways, and um, and, and you know some bunch of other stuff like that. And yeah, I, I gave blood to get these uh, concert tickets. So, wow. Well, yeah. the last concert I went to see was uh, Paul McCartney. He was at uh, then Phillips Arena. Uh, I think it's State Farmer. But that, that's the last concert I saw, and that was years ago. But, I saw you know, Paul McCartney at, at Piedmont Park. He did a Piedmont Park concert. I remember that. I remember that. I was going to go to that, but I just didn't want to get in all that crowd. But I, uh, uh, me and my friend Marty saw, uh, and we had free tickets to go see uh, – Paul McCartney, but it was good. You I know? saw the Eagles down there too. One of the Eagles had passed away, but I believe Vince Gill filled in for him. Yeah. But the rest of the Eagles were all still alive and they played at Piedmont Park. And you were talking about a remake of a song, mm -hmm. the Hotel California version from Hell Freezes Over. Yeah. Is better than the original from Hotel California. Think about this. I never liked Hotel California. That was one of the Eagles songs. I really, it just, it went, it went on forever. I didn't care for it. Uh, <laughs> oh, a lot of people did. Yeah, Al, I'm sorry you didn't like it, but a lot of people loved it. It's one Well, of that's fine. That's fine. Time. I don't, I don't have, you know, I didn't dislike it, but it's not one of my uh, favorite songs. But I'm I, telling you, it's a better version live than it is because it was a more acoustic version. It was more guitar, more everything was just nicer on the hell freezes over live version. I think one of my favorite songs by Eagles is take it to the limit. Uh, and peaceful, easy feeling. I like that one. Take it easy. Best of my love. They're all great songs. I love I like, the best, I like, of my, best of my, my love is a great song. It's a great yeah. song. One of these Thank you. I like that one. <laughs> don't do Don't do that. That's, well, I like the Eagles oh, version better than chances. Hey, hey, chance. Don't do that. It sounds awful. <laughs> You're scaring people do that. from the podcast. No, you got to stay your line. You've already said you know, it just now. Chance, I didn't chance, chance has got to be the star of the show. Don't do that. All right. Yeah. Man. By the way, yeah. Chris Burns was the, the financial client of mine who's on the run for the FBI. He stole $10 million. Okay. Oh, That's I've it. Been working on movies with Chris Burns. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> No. Uh, and we have some comments uh, to this question about which, what's, what's, which is better. Um, the remake. Oh, which which remakes are better than the original? I don't can't remember my own topic. Um, or live versions that are better than the original. Brain Bender's banner, BBB says cheap trick. I didn't like their version of Don't Be Cruel as much. Okay. I don't I don't remember that song. Don't be cruel. I remember it. Um Cheap Trick was saved by appearing live at Budokan in Japan, says Jim's camera at dawn. Yeah. Uh Ron, you have a compliment. Ron, I love your demeanor. Thumbs up, Ron Goss. Yeah. You're calm and cool. I'm bouncing around like a jackass. <laughs> well, a, why don't you just can, under can, my can, ass. can you possibly be quiet for a little bit? Yes, yes. Do, do you have to <laughs> continually chat and talk and well, nobody else spring. can get a word in edgewise? I'm not I'm Look not quit, you know, I'm not jumping all over you, but you know, you need to, you know, you need to listen. Look you don't need spring. to be you don't need to be chatting all the time. Here's the what? reason. There's the reason. What? There's Pepsi? the reason He's I'm wired Pepsi. on caffeine. Well, that's no excuse. <laughs> that's no excuse. All right. You need to even your, 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 your buddy, uh, uh, Ryan, 
says that Chance just doesn't listen enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. He told me that one time when Ryan used to come over the, and be on the his show, you know. Remember, mm -hmm. Chance? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. He's been on Sarah's show. Yeah. Yeah. He's been on yeah. Sarah's channel, yeah. my flock, a couple mm -hmm. of times. He wants to come back. He said to the other day in a private conversation with me. He says, Ryan, right. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan is a, I, I like him. He's kind of a fun guy. <laughs> well, he's bought, Sarah, he's, he's, he's bought some gear from me. He bought a, a really nice oh, studio reel to reel recorder. He bought a, a Gates board from me. And he likes the, the old uh, analog stuff. That's cool. So. Just he's a, he, you know, he's a, he's a musician. He likes, uh, he likes that old stuff. I want you to read the comment on the screen out. Since you don't what? want me to talk so much, read that, will you? <laughs> oh, my toe bad. Oh, man. Oh, okay. Can what about that? Eric B and, and uh, Rankin paid in full seven minutes of madness, the cold cut remix, 1987. I don't remember that. Do you, uh, you remember that Ron? Not when I remember. I'm sorry. I like soul music in the 70s and 80s, but I don't remember Eric being Rakeem's hits. I I like soul music. I you know I you know I, I love that. I, I like the Four Tops, the uh, Temptations. I mean all that stuff. The Coasters. I like all that stuff. Uh, that was the 50s and 60s. Al. I'm talking about 70s and 80s. Ltd. Commodores. Yeah. <laughs> well, Commodores and Lionel Richie. Lionel Richie was good. Yes, I, I do yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Lady Mumbleide. All those. Great soul songs from the seventies, eighties. Remember, remember the group, the Shy Lights, old girl. Yeah, that was remember? like seventy-two, I think. Yeah, yeah, that was a that was a great tune. Um, uh, what was another one that I liked? It was by um, uh, Me and Mrs. Jones. Who did that song? Billy Paul. Mr. Yeah, Billy. Mr. Yeah, Billy John, Paul. Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones. Al, look at the camera. That's my, one of my favorite bands of the 70s. Hello, they're great too. I like them. And they're like coming to Atlanta in their final tour. Yeah, if you can get here. a ticket, if you can get a ticket, and you'll be paying if you can get it. Big money are, though. Yeah. Are all the original members still alive? Jeff Lynn is. That's all I care about. Travel <laughs> yeah. Wilburos, baby. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. I just don't go to concerts anymore. I, I've just, I've seen enough of them and I just don't like being around a lot of people anymore. I like and I'll, I'll get off your lawn too, Al, next time I'm there. I just, I just <laughs> got a that. ticket for the uh, summer show of uh, Tim McGraw. I think he's going to be at uh, Phillips Arena in August, I believe it is. So I got like a $30, $40 ticket for him. Mm -hmm. Tim McGraw, but he's, uh, uh, is he still married to, um, what's her name? Faith Hill. Hill? Faith yeah. Hill. Are they still yep. married? Yep. Long yep. time marriage. One of the few country. Yeah. Artists Remember Lisa Hartman who married uh, Black? What's his name? Uh, Black. Black. I wanted to see Clint him Black. in South Atlanta, but I missed out on that one last year because I was going to another concert. I saw Clint Saturday Black. Night. I saw Cl Clint Black along with uh, Dwight Yoakam at the Fox when they was popular. Um, was uh, really Al, real quick, what? Sarah, hang on. Al, who did Lisa Hartman play in the Bewitched Universe in a reboot in 1970s? A character. I'm bewitched. Yeah, I bet you know Ron. Yeah, I know. Uh -huh. You can say they, let's give Al five seconds. All right. Five, four. <laughs> I don't remember? Three. Did you have a guess, Al? Three. No. Uh -uh. Two. One. Who was that bewitched? Tabitha. Yeah. It was Ow. a short-lived reboot. Tabitha. Yeah. Yeah. Was like adult a, version. A, yeah. <laughs> and it spelled correctly or something. <laughs> no, it was spelled incorrectly. It was spelled with the I instead of the A. Good continuity, Sarah. I remember everything you say, Chance. It wasn't spelled like the original spelling with an A. When she was born, the end credits said Tabatha, like the doll did by Ideal Toys. And then because of licensing, in the very next season, they changed the spelling to Tabitha. But the end credits, when she first appeared in that black and white episode when she was born, it said, in introducing Tabatha, not Tabitha. But there's some schools of, of thought that claim that Liz Montgomery wanted the spelling changed because she didn't like it. I don't believe that. I think it was a licensing issue with Ideal Toys, but that's just speculation on my part. <laughs> hey, Jim's camera. Don agrees with you, Al. I, he says, I don't count hotel California as all that great. No. Okay. Well, I think it's the greatest songs ever. And also I, I like five figure death punch. And so does BB B. And also, uh, real quick there. My favorite song of theirs is it's never, it's never enough. There you go. 
Ooh, good one from read, read that out since I talk too much or Ron, somebody read, read what BBB said about Hendrix. Sir. Oh, Jimmy uh, Hendrix along the watchtower. Oh, that's a great song. Yeah. That's, a, I mean, what, what, that's what, that's one of my favorite songs by Jimmy Hendrix. It's classic. Yeah. No, it's just, I like, and I like the other one. Hey Joe. Oh yeah. And yeah. house burning down, which is not even a B side. It was just on one of his albums. I love yeah. that song. House. Burning that, down. that one. And Hey Joe is two of my favorite uh, Hendrix songs. I think I have those on uh, 45 records. Yeah. Uh, Al, chat, comment there if you want to read it. Okay, my favorite from the 70s. It's like a theme song to wake up to Aretha Franklin's A Deeper Love. The remix. <laughs> yeah, the remix. I, that's that's a good song. I like Aretha Franklin. See, I, I like uh, Do You Want to Touch the Joan Jett version better than Gary Glitter, the original. That's just that's another example of a remake that, in my opinion, was better than the original song. I like also speaking to Joan Jett, the her version of Crimson and Clover better than the original. Well, her Crimson and Clover was good, but you can't beat Tommy James and the Shondells. I mean, it's a generational know. thing. I know. I mean, there's it, it's opinions here. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, Tommy we'll James actually has a weekend radio show on the 60s channel. On I think he's on on Sundays, you know, playing his favorite uh, songs. And the first one, no, Al is a DJ. He still is. He does music for your life, does some voice tracking and introducing songs, just so you know. And that's out of California, where Sarah's at and where BBB is at. Right? Yes. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, I always wanted, I mean, the first job I ever had, I mentioned before, was in a movie theater because I like movies. But I always wanted to be on the radio. I always wanted to be a disc jockey. And when I was an usher in my hometown, the theater right around the corner was a radio station, uh, 980 AM WKOM, and they were top 40 station. And so I would go to hang out at the radio station. They, they let me do that. And then a lot of times I met the DJs and then I would let them in the movies for free. So I got, you know, I got in good with them. And so, uh, the first job I really had was playing church tapes on Sundays at that radio station. <laughs> from uh, 6 a.m. to noon, and then they started playing music again. But that, that was my intro into radio. But I always wanted to, to be a disc jockey. That's something I always wanted to do. And I guess Ron always wanted to be a disc jockey, right? Yeah, I started at 14 years old. I was a DJ in Rockmart, Georgia, on my AM station. Mm -hmm. Went in, I rode a bicycle from the high school over through town to get to the radio station by 3 o'clock to do my afternoon show from 3 to 7. And... I hopped on the radio and started playing top 40 music and everybody getting out of school at three Oh five would be, uh, turning on the radio and listening to me. Oh, it was great because, you know, uh, I felt I was, I mean, I love playing top 40 music. I, that was what I listened to. And so, uh, uh, I just, you know, and then when I moved over to, to full-time radio, I went to a, a station on a 1340 AM. But anyway, uh, I was a nighttime jock from six to midnight. And it was a top I 40 filled in on Sunday. You said you did Sunday gospel. I, I filled in for our Sunday morning guy on uh, WPLK in Rockmart, Georgia. Uh huh. Reverend Roosevelt Sewell on Sunday mornings. <laughs> Reservoir. He, played, he played soul music, soul gospel, and a little bit of white gospel. Mm -hmm. And so I would fill in for him when he needed a, a day off. And I would go in there and the preachers would come in and preach in the studio for 15 or 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then they'd ask me to play a song from them off an album or something and then go back to preaching live. So I would be in the studio for all that. And they'd say, you're healed. We're, we're going to turn it back over to Mr. White announcer over there filling in for brother Rosie today. <laughs> when I, you know, when I worked at 10, 10 AM, this is way before TZA when um, the Rivers family owned it. Uh, the studio was here on Mountain Industrial Boulevard, not far from me. But it was a gospel station. And so on Saturdays, I had three preachers come in on Saturday that did live shows. And so uh, it was it was it was interesting. And they would actually bring the check, you know, f to well, the radio the station. Show, otherwise, they wouldn't they, get on the radio. Right. And, and they, you know, they they brought the check. And I, you know, uh, the, the the owner said, don't let them get on the air unless they bring a check. If they don't bring right. a check, they don't go on the air. And so they always bought a check. So, right. you know, I did the same thing. I had to write them a receipt out of a little receipt book mm -hmm. to let them know if they paid their bill that Sunday. Oh, yeah. That was fun, though. I, you know, I, I worked at 1010 that way. I worked there for about four years under the Rivers family. WGUN, right? Yeah. 10, 10 a.m. We yeah. worked there when it was WTZA, different call letters, same right. frequency. 
But uh, Jim's, uh, Jim's camera at dawn. Al, do you want to read that? Talking about Clint Black. He just mentioned a song. Oh, Killing Time. That's a great song. And, that was and BBB, before, that was one of his big hits. And look, and, another comment. Oh, go ahead. And Sorry. another another Clint Black song is uh, uh, "Lights Are On But Nobody's Home." Remember that one, uh, Ron? I don't remember that one. Yeah, well, you were in radio. I think you were at Kicks at the time. That was popular. Oh, yeah. Nobody's home. Okay, I remember that. Lights are on, but nobody's home. Yeah. yeah. Clint Black. So he, 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 was, a, he was a good singer. I, I enjoyed his music. He did I a, a that. duet with uh, Winona one time, and that was my favorite. Was Bad Goodbye. That was my favorite Clint Black song. I like The Judge. Uh, with uh, You remember The Judge? Yeah, just my, Winona. And yeah, yeah. I liked uh, "Love Can Build a Bridge" is my favorite song by them. And he says I don't listen. Who says that? You do. Anyway, um, there's a listen, comment. I don't listen to country music now. No, but I did back then when I was in it. Country music. Uh, uh, I was talking about Joan Jett earlier, and BBB said something about uh, the Runaways, Cherry Bomb, Lita Ford, and Joan Jett. Yeah, I love that. That was a good movie too. Even though I'm not a big fan of Chris and Stewart, I like that movie, The Runaways. Oh, Who Ron, did that? Give a compliment, Who, huh? What did Ron? Ron? If you want to read it, it's compliment to Ron. Ron has a radio voice for sure. No, these guys do. I don't. And so does our friend Barry King. Oh, I didn't mention that. Barry King, nice guy, host of uh, G, uh, host of BK on the air. His initials has nothing to do with Burger King. He sold me out of the goodness of his heart for a very fair fair price. His most of his comic book collection. I'm going to show a picture of these comic books. He 17 long boxes. Look at this. And there's original artwork. Hang on, let me take the comment off so you can see wow. it better. There. Um, here's chance. That's here at my home. And there's 17 long boxes there. 17 long boxes. And I'm very, very grateful. That's so yeah. freaking cool. And, um, Another quick thing, and then I'll shut up. I promise, Al. That Space 1999 marathon on Shout on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, they showed an episode. There was a cut scene because of violence, and I have an image of a cut scene, an episode called End of Eternity Season 1. Look, where Martin Landau's character was savagely attacked by someone holding a model airplane, and they slashed his face. Look at that, Al. Look at the monitor. See all that blood? Yeah. I've seen worse. Well, that, that <laughs> was cut from the episode. Anyway, I sent that to Sarah and I had it on my computer. So now everyone can see that. Now I'll shut up and get back to the music chat. Sorry. <laughs> and thank you to Barry King. Look, he that's a lot of comic books. And I am i haven't even started going through them yet. It's going to take me a while to rebag and inventory. But that's a nice guy. I mean, I'll, I'll remember that the rest well, of if my you life. Well, if you want to get right with me, you can give me all the extras you, don't, you have copies of. <laughs> You don't even like comic books. I'll, I'll take them as a collection. You know? No, you're going to give them to your friend. I am not. I, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. No. That I can read your your mind. I, I still I still have the ones you gave me in the past. I haven't given those away. All right. That's a good point. You're right. right. The Wolverine one and all those others. Yeah, I gave you some yes. good books. That's yeah. right. Hey, uh, Ron, the uh, tonight with the, the, the Billy Joel concert, what... Uh, what is that on CBS? You said, yeah, he said it was nine o'clock, so I just double checked. It is nine o'clock. Okay, so it's well, I mean, a 100th I, I, anniversary I, special or one 100th celebration from uh, Madison Square Garden. Well, I, I, I may tune it in there because I like his music, yeah, his, be you know, two hours of Billy Joel hits, I'm sure, yeah. So, but I hope I he does sure. the entertainer. I'd play you a, a clip of that song, but I we get, get busted, but it's it's a great tune, it's one of my favorites. Hey, speaking of uh, CBS, they canceled the talk. I, I kind of like that talk show. It's like yeah. better than The View. It was it, losing money. It, Nobody was watching it. it was oh, you read, the you read the time. article? You read I the article? It. I saw it. So you don't need to go in depth on it. I saw it. No, I, I, I didn't, no, I, either, I, I didn't read that. What, I, I what, saw what, Nobody watches The View either, but they're still on. That, they right. It's better to put on. <laughs> Thank you. Well, The they, View, they so it'll, go, it'll go away eventually. Yeah, I know. They've lost so many viewers. They're so one-sided. It's like nobody watches it anymore. You know, I used no. to like The View when Barbara Walters was on there, and they didn't <laughs> talk politics. Uh, I used to enjoy watching it. But it I, used to I be can't. an entertainment program. It wasn't a political show. It wasn't a political a show. And they lost to me, viewers. and think about this, I like Whoopi Goldberg. I think she's a terrific actress, <laughs> but I could, I can't stand her on the show. I can't, I can't. Mm -hmm. 
take her rhetoric, you know. But you know, as far as a, a, an actress, she's very good. But Joy I, Behar, <laughs> Joy Behar, it, she she's not Jewish. She pretends to be Jewish, by the way. She's Catholic or was Catholic, but she um she is suing Ryan Reynolds because he refused to go on the View. That, that's that ain't, that'll that's not going to hold up in court. Come on, I, I don't think so either. That's why it's so yeah. ludicrous. Uh, let me tell you a quick story about her on the set of Hall Pass. First time I did an extra gig back 14 years ago, 2010. She held up the whole set. Everyone was ready to go. And you had Jenna Fisher from the office on the set. You had Christina Applegate on the set before her medical issues with MS and breast cancer. Great. I talked with, she was so nice. Treat everyone nice. Joy Behar was concerned about people having guns on the set. She goes, how this is Georgia. How are we going to have security here? And then she was also held up in hair and makeup. She wanted to have her hair just right. The director, she, used to, have, her, she used to have a really good show back in the day before she the view. Too. She was she, on she headline used to, news. She used to have a show on headline news. It was actually pretty funny. That show sucked. I liked it. <laughs> now, I don't, I don't like her on the view at all, but you know, I liked, I liked her show when she had it on uh, headline news. Well, I'm going to say your line. You should trademark it out. I didn't care for that show. I didn't care. For, well, there's a lot of things I don't care for. I don't care for you running your mouth so much. Ooh. <laughs> like, yeah. Ooh. Just remember, <sighs> Whoopi what? was a comedian. Jo Joy Behar was a comedian. These are the people that we're getting our political advice from these days. So, <laughs> but You know who brought politics into that show? I think it was Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> To be on oh, there. I think Rosie God. O'Donnell started that. Yeah, she got Trump. I mean, a lot of a lot of you guys aren't on a, you're not on TikTok, but I am. But anyway, <laughs> Rosie O'Donnell is on TikTok every single day. She's posting stuff mm. on TikTok. Is that a plus I mean, or a minus? Minus selling point. I don't well, think she looks not, she yeah. looks so much different now. She just doesn't yes, have makeup is. on. She wears big glasses and she I don't know. She's, she's the, the word you're looking for is hideous. Okay. There hideous. you go. Yeah, that's good. Word. Yes, it's Rosie just that's true. Idiot. Yeah, I, I saw her, and my eyes saw it in my head. So that, don't look at her. It'll be fine. I remember her on "Give Me a Break" with Nell Carter, like the last <laughs> season of that show when they went to New York. That was like the first thing she ever did. Rosie O'Donnell on "Give Me a Break" and then I found. Uh, uh, I was going through a box of stuff the other day, just cleaning out some doors, and I found a, a TV guide. That I'll go get it, and it's got a picture of Rosie on the back advertising something. Let me go get it. I'll okay. Right hey, Ron, do you agree with this? Um, yeah, BBB says good. Gloria Gaynor, I will survive. She prefers the Guy Hans remix to the original. Oh. That's the version I usually played for parties when I DJed for parties a long time ago. The, the original or Gloria the one you're talking about? The remix. I did the remix. Really? Because it was a more disco version. It was a more pop, poppy version. But everybody loved it. You and know. Jim's camera at dawn mentions uh, "Come Together" by Aerosmith, which is from the Sgt. Pepper's movie from 1978. That's the only song from that soundtrack, which was a double album that you really hear airplay on, anymore on radio or uh, anything. Really, I mean, it was—it's the uh, Aerosmith version. And there were a lot yeah. of good songs on there. Peter Frampton. You had uh, the Bee Gees. There was a lot of good covers of the Beatles in that uh, movie. Most people uh, just play the Beatles. If they play the Beatles, they don't play the remakes of the Beatles. <laughs> No, it's, it's that's hard. True. Although, although uh, Ann Murray had a hit called "You Won't See Me," which was a Beatles hit, and it went yeah. to number one. So, yeah, there there are songs by the Beatles that other people do. So. I love Aerosmith too. Yeah. You're welcome, Sarah. She says, "Thank you so much for turning me on to Space 1999." I really thank you for that. You're welcome. I'm glad you're watching. I love seeing younger people that weren't around when that show was on the air. All right, here's the uh, here's the uh, TV guide. We'll talk about it Tuesday. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's right. On your channel, we're going to do a show about it. Freak ad. But on the back, it's an ad for Rosie. She was actually pretty back then. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What? See? Look at you, yeah. Al, on topic and prepared. Good on you. Look at her there. Yeah. That's when she had her talk show. Yeah. The Rosie yeah. O'Donnell yeah. show. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Well, uh, this TV oh, guy is yeah. thick. Look at how thick it is. That's what she said. <laughs> I know that's getting old too, did, isn't did, it? Did, did, no, that never gets old. But uh, did you ever see that movie Exit to Eden? No, no I didn't did see that. Ron? Ron, did you see that Exit to Eden? Yeah, I kind of remember it had a little uh, kinky sex play in it or something. Yeah, it was basically soft core. That yeah, was soft core. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and uh, that was probably the only thing that I could tolerate her in. <laughs> there you go. I didn't remember her being in that one. I guess I wasn't looking at her that much. I was that's terrible, girl. right? Yeah. Yeah, I know. The other girls. Yeah. Al, Al, would you read that comment? I'm losing my voice finally. Um, about the women on the View. From BBB. I think the women on that show are pampered 
and entitled, not impressed. I'm not impressed either. Hashtag that's facts. coming from a woman, so that's good. Yeah, so then I backed it up with hashtag facts. So there you go. Uh, Ron, do you want to read that comment? Can you see it? Billy Joel, the entertainer and sometimes a fantasy. Oh. Yeah. Jim no Cameron one likes Al song. I don't know the entertainer. I, mm. I do remember a lot of Billy Joel songs. I just don't remember the entertainer. Maybe if I heard it. I There's Barbara like Walters. I don't know it off the top of my head. Yeah. Baba Wawa. Well, Trivia for Ron. I don't think Al will know, but he might. What show did The View replace on ABC Daytime? Probably a soap Here's opera. Rosie. It was, no, it was a talk show. It was a talk show. Another it talk show? A similar kind of talk show with just two people. There was a male host and a female host, and that was the mm -hmm. name of the show. It lasted just a season or two. I'll tell you if you if you give no, up. I don't I don't remember. It was a show called Mike and Maddie with uh, Michael Berger and Maddie Monfort. And actually, I watched it because Lindsay Wagner guest starred on there. I'm a big freak of the Bionic Woman. Anyway, yeah, 1994, 95. Bionic Woman is awesome though. So, <laughs> no, thank you. Um, and uh, there's a comment to you, Al, about your TV guide. Oh yeah, I used to uh, have a lot of TV guides. I threw a lot of them away. I should have saved them, but I found this one in a drawer the other day. But uh, would you I please remember read the comment? If you don't mind, I was prompting you. Oh, to yeah, read it. it's just TV guide. I haven't seen one of those in forever. But yeah. uh, B -B -B. they used to run uh, when I was in television. We ran commercials for TV guide this week on TV guide, and they were like twenty seconds. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember that. God, so. I forgot all about that. <laughs> I, I, but TV I had... guide was the thing. You know, it was very popular for years and years. There's Facebook groups devoted to TV guide collecting. Several of them, I'm members of them. Oh, really? It just shows covers of TV guides. I've got more. I've, I've probably got maybe eight or nine more. I've got Man, one. I do too. I've got one when Gone with the Wind first aired on network television. I've got that one and uh, some others. I got some with Jane Fonda on them because I like Jane Fonda at the time. But um, yeah, I've got I've probably got eight or nine more somewhere. Um, you lose chance. Did somebody go away? Oh, yeah. There you go. Chance has got some problems. Graphic, you didn't. I was trying to put my graphic back up while I grabbed some TV guides. <laughs> the camera. I was going <laughs> to shut my mouth and show some TV guides. So let other people talk <laughs> and stay on point with the TV guides. So, well, did I, I open up a can of worms showing TV guides? <laughs> of course it did. Also, I had TV guides still too of Star Trek. So, but they're mm -hmm. in horrible condition because of course. Yeah. I think but I have Star one with Lucy on the cover. I have one with Lucy on the cover. That was an oldie. Yeah, I've got one with Lucy. Um, I think it's what was she, she was on a, a special or something. I don't know. They did a tribute to her. Uh, anyway, she was on the front of TV Guide. L.A. Law. My my aunt who was uh, in, in does day. or did acting and stuff like that was in an episode of L.A. Law. And that's the guy from Clash of the. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. She's Speaking the one I've been that I've been talking to to see if she would come on and either yours or my show, probably yours because that would be better. Nicolette Sheridan, remember her? That's when she's on Knots Landing before Desperate Housewives, a long time before that. But uh, Harry Hamlin, remember him from Clash of the Titans? Your favorite movie, Al? I hated that movie. I know. I, hate, I can't believe that. Here's the it. here's the first introduction of Matlock with Lucille Ball. There's a uh, Andy Griffith. What a cover. From 1986, when Matlock was just starting out. I'll be right back, guys. And they were dating at the time? There was well. generation. The Olsen twins. <laughs> the little millionaires. Yeah. And clothing designers. And their little sister is now, of course, is, is a Marvel movie star playing the Scarlet Witch. Uh, remember that show, Our House, William Brimley, and there's uh, Shannon Doherty before Beverly Hills 90210. And uh, is that Deidre Hall? Yeah, Deidre Hall from Days of Our Lives and Electra Woman herself. Right there. Look at that. We're talking about late night TV. There's a cover of the late night TV wars. There's Letterman. There's Jay Leno. You know what my favorite late night talk show was? And Chevy Chase. He failed with, after six weeks. With, yeah. uh, with uh, the show with Craig Ferguson after David Letterman. He was good with that little skeleton. Yeah, his, his name was Jeff. But Craig Ferguson should have taken over uh, where Stephen Colbert was. They should have given him that. So I can't stand Stephen Colbert. There's Dolly speaking of country music. Dolly Parton, who has uh, segued into rock music. 
very late in her career. I love it. Because she was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Hey, there is someone's entering the show. My gosh, it's okay. Basil. Yeah, it's Tom nice. Williams. I thought, I thought yeah. you were going to be a no-show, my brother. How are you? And I will be quiet. I'm, I'm fine. Oh, God. <laughs> Your piece, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. This is me. Adjust my camera. Okay. I'm going to turn my volume up. Right, so apparently the sure microphone I've got is not compatible with StreamYard. Uh, that's what I'm told. So uh, I don't know. Anyway. It's not compatible. It doesn't sound right. That's crazy. Well, it's, it, they're still working on a uh, on some compatibility issues. So, uh, what? Well, it's not. It's not working. No, no. It's you know, the microphone. Sure it works. I'm not being a wiseacre. I'm just letting you know. But I thought I thought you were using the microphone on the phone. Oh uh, no, no. I'm, I'm supposed to be using the one uh, from. Uh, are you the sure microphone? So what? So what microphone are you using now? Huh? It's supposed to be using this one, which is a sure microphone. But and it's uh, not working right or what? Well, apparently there's a compatibility issue. Uh, StreamYard has uh, seen this microphone, apparently. So, oh. So well, I see. Do uh, so y'all make, make a PP before you uh, start your <laughs> eight hour extravaganza? <laughs> Yeah, it's like there's three or four hours shows. You know, but I hey, wish chance. I wish. Why don't I wish chance would leave now and go take a leak? <laughs> at least we could get a word. I don't know you, but you at least we could get a word in edgewise. Yeah. I'm not talking right now. I'm doing a show on TV Guide cover, sir. Yes, funny sir. man. You're a very funny man. You know, you guys, you guys need to learn to get along. That's all it's doing. That's, that's well, all. we get along fine. He just talks too much. That's all. Oh, it's 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 part of. Uh, it's part of the uh, uh, gift show. of gab. <laughs> so so I, understand, nice. I understand you went to see a movie at the plaza. Yeah, and the seats killed my butt at once again. So. Well, you know, when we went to uh, a late show there, you complained about the seats, remember? Yeah, well, the, well, the seats are still uncomfortable. And we saw Spinal Tap. Uh, this is Spinal Tap with my son, Chris. And right. It was packed. It was a W A B E. Uh, the Lois Rices. Yes, and she was there, and talking about uh, the movie. Well, did they have a Q and A after the movie or before? No, they had it before. They had. Oh, it before. okay. Yeah, they had it before. Well, and she she was quite a far. I got my picture with her, big whoop, and uh, it was it was quite uh, quite the afternoon. The parking lot was cut. There was no place to park. My son had to Uber in, and I oh. took him home. So it's, it's, it was great. It was crazy. They have, they, they, they have like <coughs> a serious parking issue because they yeah. have the uh, Atlanta Film Festival going on. Well, there's, there's I mean, the oh, plaza's yeah. always had parking issues unless you get there early before yeah. the show. I mean, you'll, you know, well, but well, that's just the back parking lot, the side streets. I mean, it was just. It was just packed. It was just. Did packed. you try to park out back? Of course you did. Yeah, yeah of course. Of did course. you go out the that back exit? Remember that trick I showed you when we went together yes. the last time? You went out that door again? No, 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 no. I didn't go out that door. I because I parked in the front. Gotcha. You. So you had no to... reason to. Gotcha. Was no. the, was the movie uh, on film or digital? It was digital. It was. How digital. did it look? How did it look? Fine. It looked fine. But you know, uh, uh, this is Spinal Tap. I mean, it really a. Uh, it appeals to people that played in bands, I guess, like you guys did. Yeah. It was okay. I didn't really didn't care for it that much, but I know uh, our friend Tom Hudgens liked it, and you liked it. But you know, hey, I, it, it's okay. Directed yeah. by Rob Reiner, but and, it, and they're know. making and they're making a sequel, and um, it's based out of New Orleans, and uh, I guess they're retired now. I guess, and uh, we'll see. Well, I I don't know what else they can do with the. Uh, yeah, franchise, but uh, um, we'll see. Um, I'm well, sure another another friend of mine. This no, uh, no uh, pun intended, sir. sir. Well, uh, what time was it over? What time did you guys get out of there? About five thirty. Yeah, because the show was at four, wasn't it? Yeah, it was at four. Yeah. So the four, well, it, it yeah. was it was packed. Yeah, it was a uh, it was pretty packed. Uh, what do they charge to get in these days? I think. To, uh, my son had pre-bought the tickets. It was like thirty-two bucks, about fifteen bucks a piece, I guess. Yeah, but but he paid. He bought he bought one box of popcorn, 
mm-hmm. water, a box of raisinets, and um, a, a can of beer, and it was thirty some bucks. <laughs> I'm you sure can those I, in, your, in your jacket. I, for I'm sure Christopher paper. Escobar appreciates you donating to the plaza. <laughs> I'm sure he does. I'm sure he does. You know how what much you say, Ron? Ron Gosling, something? Oh, what? I I, but I, 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 how many people were there? And uh, people, you know, seem to appreciate the movie uh, for what's worth. They had a girl, a, a lady who wrote a book um, and worked for TCM. She was the programmer for 15 years at. Uh, mm-hmm. On the classic movies, I forget. I, I don't know her name, but I, I certainly didn't know her. And I don't think you did either. No, no. you recognize her name, but uh, um, she, said, you know, said a few things about the movie. But hell, I could have I could have said more interesting things than she did. I know. Well, you know, uh, speaking of TCM, today, uh, April fourteenth, nineteen ninety four, is when it went on the air. Yes. And so I don't have TCM anymore, but they've been uh, like all day today have been showing uh, intros, all the movies by Robert Osborne. Oh, really? And so, uh, but they had over, over the last week, I mean, I don't have TCM, but they've been posting them on YouTube on the TCM channel. So I could watch them that way. But like each day, uh, each night, Ben Mikowitz was were like, you know, uh, there was a guy named, I think when you were there named Tom, somebody, he was the yeah, manager. Tom, Tom, um, Tom Brown. Anyway, he was, he was on, uh, they had everybody in the past that had worked for TCM was on talking about their days at, at Turner classic movies. Yeah, I, I went to Tom, one of my last things, I went to Tom Brown's office up on the fourth floor, mm-hmm. floor of that new building. Right. Gave him like an idiot. Mm-hmm. By uh, he, you know, he's a big Elvis aficionado. Right. He's a guy that uh, um, they, they've done. Some, they've done some Graceland things. They've done some other stuff. Uh, but I gave him my big giant Elvis, um, and her Las Vegas I got from Spencer Gifts. It was an oversized Elvis. That, that sucker must have been 20, 20 some inches tall, and. Um, I gave it to him, and I uh, wished I hadn't. Well, you know, he's he's the one that wanted to buy my uh, Elvis yes. Harum Scarum poster. That's right. That's right. Because he, uh, yep. he, uh, he pounded me for a long time to buy this poster. It's right behind that door there. But anyway, uh, <laughs> he, didn't he, get, he didn't want to pay me but 150 bucks for yeah, it. And I said, well, I can't, I can't sell it that cheap. <laughs> no, no. That, even... <laughs> Even back down, uh, that that was too much. You know, two fifty, three fifty, maybe back then. Right uh, now, double that. You know, double double that at least. Uh, you know, for what? What are you, what are you doing, Chance? I was referring to someone in chat. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> I saw you doing this. And, you know, and, uh, uh, someone in California says Chance has a lot of energy. Giggle, that's giggle. Because, because he's been drinking Pepsi. Oh, that's a, that's an that's an excuse. I drink sodas and I don't I don't I don't, I don't get like. You know. That's why I said you got a pee pee. I think something else is going on. No. Oh. <laughs> oh. I I'm gonna do a, a pee test for you, like I told Sean Shannon yeah. in the media I would do. Yeah. Are you guys drink a lot of? Oh, look you, at that. You oh yeah. The show on Fistful of Radio. The best radio out there. Yeah. yeah They're so there. sweet. And so is uh, well, that's hashtag facts. So, my, my channel, but uh, that's his channel, yes, yes, of course. Al, where's your stickers? <laughs> what, what, sti- your- oh, hang on, what <laughs> stickers are you talking about? Well, you got nostalgic pot blast stickers or cast stickers, or Ron, you got any stickers? Not at the moment, but I'm getting something made for the future. Oh, you did, well, I, I got those. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's what uh, Tom yeah, was holding up. Yeah, I bet one too. That's what I've got. Yeah, that Basil gave me. Tom. Oh, let's all let's all th- show them at the same time. Ready? I'm trying what to find check. time. Check. I'm not ready. I gotta look. Oh. <laughs> all the uh, all the fistful of radios I, I threw away. Oh, <laughs> oof! Why, why are you why are you being so mean? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Why, why are you being so mean spirited all this? Ah, you can't get me. I've had a great day today. Had a no, great I, day. I was like, 
You know, I, I, I have go, one I left to, somewhere. I, I went to Sam's Club off of um, uh, Claremont Road today for the first time. And, you know, it's a nice, neat, you know, clean place. And uh, uh, I picked up a few things. But I don't think they're, uh, uh, th this is for chance, mostly. I don't hmm. think pizza and their drinks <clears throat> are as good as Costco's. That's just my mm. opinion. Um, you know, where, where is my camera? I thought my camera was right here. Okay. Right. And, well, and, uh, solo again. So there just to let you know, I, I don't think it's as, as good. And it's not as good a, a deal um, as it is it, uh, as it is at Costco, I don't think. And they're slow as crap. You know, that's, mm. that right there is enough to make you want to go, not ever go there. <laughs> <clears throat> but anyway, I digress. Did you find your, uh, did you find okay. your uh, coaster? Oh, you still haven't found your coaster? It's here. I didn't do Now, it. here's what I've got. Here's a little piece of trivia, which I don't expect anyone, maybe Ron might know. But I don't think anybody knows who this person is. I've, I've stamped them on the back of a limited run of my disc. Who is that person? That's one of the, uh, the Manny Mower Jack. Nope. That's from Pet Boys, isn't it? No. No. Al, do you know who that is? <laughs> I, yeah, I've seen him in a lot of movies. I don't know. He's Jack Benny's arch nemesis. Oh, the that's version. right. Fred oh. Allen. Fred Hang Allen. On a second. That's who it was. I was going to say Clutch Cargo. <laughs> up. I mean, Ron, you haven't got up. I'll, I'll get up too. Everybody's right. getting up. So I, I you know. <laughs> I'm looking for that I'm this here somewhere. Everybody's up. Now it's a little bit louder. I can hear myself. Okay. Right. Hang on a minute. I have an earpiece problem. Hang on. You have an <laughs> earpiece problem? Okay. I hear you fine. I'm using. No, it's my thing. thing. There. That, there? That's the only. That's the only downside of uh, Stringer, I guess. Is is the, is it has a slight audio issue, but not as bad as OBS. Shucks. Gosh, I, I mean, OBS is good. OBS is a little bit better, but Streamyard is easier for you know, mo you know different people being on board. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It is. Hey Tom, I went to uh, Costco and bought an air fryer, and I love it. <clears throat> you did. Oh, yeah. I did. Wow. It's it's a Sherla table. Um they had it on sale. Yeah. It had it for ninety nine bucks and it's got it's got three levels. It's got a light in it and it it cooks really some good stuff. Yeah. Well uh, uh, I've been telling you the air fryers are good. So oh good. yeah. It's uh but one thing about an air fryer, it puts out a lot of heat. Yeah, it does. You you cannot have it up against the wall. No, you can't. I've you got I've it got up. it by my stove, but I got it kind of turned where it shoots over the stove and not right on the wall. Yeah. Uh, when I use it, so uh, it puts out a lot of heat. Yeah, it does. It really does. Chance, why were you so? Why were you showing slides? Uh, Barry King gave me these today. These are transparencies from Star Trek Four. This was a nice little bonus when huh. he sold me his comic books today. I thought that was really cool of them. Um, I was going to Star Trek fan. You could make you could make uh, eight by ten glossies from these. He was telling me. Wow, they're really special. You can't see them, so I guess I'll uh, remove wait, my wait, fat wait. face from the well, solo well, layout. You can't. You can't if you uh, put a light. Put a light. Like if you, you got your what? phone. You got a light. You got your right phone. Uh, the light behind it. There we go. I got just put a light behind them, <laughs> like that maybe. Yeah. Or if you got a slide projector. Yeah, they're, they're solo. I see. Solo. Yeah. Yeah. I see it. These are really cool, and they're yeah. all Star Trek Four. Okay, no, no, we're Star Trek no, Four is the best. <laughs> yeah, it is. I thought you'd love that, Sarah. Absolutely, okay. frequently. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, better you talk about Star Trek than talking about an air fryer. I agree. Stay on subject. Let's talk more about. Let's let's do. Uh, let's start the show over and do a whole show on air fryer recipes. <laughs> Why you start? <laughs> oh, I, I have to go then. Bye. See you later. <laughs> you gotta go. Bye. You gotta go. Time for the uh, Billy Joel show. Yeah. 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 CBS yeah, oh, on the network. Well, I, I'm, I'm sorry. It was Paramount Plus. I was watching earlier. That's it. Will be there. That's, you're correct. That's where I saw it. Oh, I found it. Oh, there it is. I, hey, I thought Ron she, Gosh. I thought Ron she Gosh threw this away, and I was mad at her because I thought she threw. Hey, Ron. Away. Hey, Ron. Oh, wait. Let me make that big. Hey, Ron. 
Hey, Ron. Ron, yes, Ron I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm talking. Ron. Hey, Ron. Go ahead, Al. I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> All right. Uh, you like nostalgia. Do you have like a favorite movie? Do you have a favorite song? Do you have a favorite TV show? Um, yes, Al. I'm not a weirdo. I'm, I'm like everybody else. I'm normal. Well, I'm, I'm asking. Okay. 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 What, my favorite what, movie. Castle what Blanca. Say, what, Casablanca. Oh, everybody says oh, Casablanca. They, they either say Casablanca or Citizen Kane. Okay. Then never you know. mind. All right. Never okay. mind. My All favorite right. song, You've Got a Friend by James Taylor. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. That's nice. That's, that's right. cool. All right. Favorite TV show. Favorite TV show. Uh, More Than Exposure. Good. That, was that the one with uh, Burt oh, Reynolds? Alaska. Huh? The one about Alaska, where the guy went to Alaska. And oh, that's right. That's right. What was, people that live in Alaska. What, yeah, that was good. What was the show with Burt Reynolds? I, 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 midnight, what was that show? Evening Shade. What was called. Evening Shade. Evening I like that one, too. I thought that was cool. Mar Mary yeah. Lou Henner was his wife, and she has a uh, a memory. She doesn't forget anything. Photographic she, memory. Yeah. yeah. She, she still has it. And you see her almost every day on the Hallmark Channel. She's supposed to be on every Hallmark movie ever made. Her and that girl from Full House. Man. You know, I have never watched a Hallmark movie, the channel. I've never watched anything on there. It just doesn't appeal to me. Yeah. Hey, Ron, BBB in California says, I love Ron. To you, Ron Goss. Thanks. I like BBB. Okay. That's and, uh, and BBB and yeah, Dr. Shivago is his favorite. Oh, Dr. Yes. Shivago was good. I love the soundtrack to it. It's got a great soundtrack. Yeah, a good movie about adultery. Yeah. Well, that is true, but it, it, it was so popular. I mean, you know, it's just really good. Yeah, they even spelled Chicago correctly. I, I'm impressed. Oh, she's <laughs> brilliant. That's why. Hey, hey, well, there you go. <laughs> hey Tom, yeah. uh, earlier, I don't know if you're uh, tuning in, but uh, I was asking this question. This would be a good one for you because you know a lot about music. A lot of people don't know you're a drummer. Yeah, well, I used to be. I'm not, not anymore. Right? Well, what can you think of a song that where the remake was better than the original, or the live version was better than the original? Oh, gosh. Uh, well, I mean, not to put you on the spot, but I mean, I mean, uh, uh, better than the probably Hotel California by the Eagles so was better live. That than, came uh, up. But that but came up. Yeah. but that was back when. But that was back when they had some of the other uh, some of the older members now i don't think it is but uh yeah a lot of them have um, unfortunately died yeah well well yeah a couple of them have died randy meisner and you know i you know randy meisner uh th they have a falling out right. as, as don henley tends to have a mm -hmm. falling out with everybody and, joe uh, walsh yeah, yeah the falling out <laughs> well well he had the, <laughs> I don't think you've had a falling out with joe walsh yet you know what song i like by joe walsh he did it by himself it's called life's been good yeah, well, he does that with the Eagles too. I tear out the wall. You know, it's a great song. He I like Dirty Laundry. Didn't he do Dirty Laundry? No, that was Don Henley. That's do. right. No. Yeah. God, that's did you guys? Did you guys like Bob Dylan? Yeah, no. I, you know, I, I, no. I, I, I like Bob Dylan. I, you know, I like his lyrics, but not his music. I, his voice. I, I understand why some people don't like him, but uh, I'm one of those few that do like him. He's with the Traveling World. Wolverines with George Harrison. And, oh yeah, uh, he was great there. Uh, he wrote he he wrote uh, one of my favorite songs by the Turtles called "You Baby." He wrote that. Yeah. But uh, speaking of uh, uh, Bob Dylan, Timothy Chalamet is doing a biopic on him, and he and I've seen scenes with him. Is Bob Dylan? He looks. I mean, it's amazing how he transforms himself into to Bob Dylan. Wow. So I'm looking forward to that movie. Wow. And uh, he, but he's uh, Timothy Chalamet, of course, was in Wonka last, but uh, he's he looks just like but it's going it's going to be a good movie. Yeah. It's called it's called Dylan, and uh, it's just about I like Bob what Dylan. A great title, so original. <laughs> well, it's a biopic. We know Dylan. Uh, yeah, Dylan. What, but, what do you know, want him to call it? You know, I like Bohemian Rhapsody. We didn't. It wasn't Queen. It was Bohemian Rhapsody. You know, come up with something. What was the song? Was Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh, tambourine Man. By the yeah. way, William Shatner. William Shatner's version of Mr. Tambourine Man is way better than the original. No, it's not. The Burgess. Uh, no, the no, uh, 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 no, no, it's not. Chance is right. Yeah. Chance is right. Sorry. Chance Absolutely. Right. Birds. Well, no. yes. Well, let's say it's more fun to watch <laughs> yeah. more than, uh, 
the original. Uh, I'll, I'll say that. I will say that. But uh, uh, it's more fun to watch. But anyway, uh, Bob Dylan with with the uh, Wilburys were, was uh, was great with Petty and Wurt Orbison and uh, and all those guys. I don't know if my camera's just messed up here. There it is. Uh, but I really liked his vocals back then. Well, so, some I, some I, of the Wilburys music was good, but you know, a lot of us. Rough, oh, yeah. yes, but they were good. But now they're really bad. I mean, now they're uh, uh, you know, now they're <laughs> really bad. But but at least back then he could still kind of carry a tune. And uh, I, I think <clears throat> the inspiration with you know George Harrison, and Roy Orbison, and everybody being with him helped help that help that right along. It's a shame that group never did any uh, true live performances as a group. Uh, it's a shame they couldn't get together and do one big Hollywood Bowl performance or something, uh, but they they didn't. And I know Jeff Lynn still includes a Wilbury song mm -hmm. or two in his uh, in his concert. And it, last time he was on tour, Jeff Lynn, he had Danny Harrison on singing "Handle with Care," and Danny sounds just like his father, George Harrison. So that was good. That was. Uh, and that's he looks just like George too. And he does. And he does. I think my favorite was uh, "Lay Lady Lay." Yeah, that's a great a song. song called "You Belong to Me." It yeah. was in a, a movie. It was a movie soundtrack, and he did a version of "You Belong to Me," the classic. Yeah, and it was I like. Cool. I like. I like "Knock It on Heaven's Door." No, he's one of Heaven's Door, another big hit. Yeah, yeah, that was from the movie Pat Garrett, Billy the Kid. That that almost has all the awards. He, he's got a, he's got a Oscar. He's got a. Uh, he's obviously got a Grammy. Um, I don't know that he's gotten a Tony or an Emmy, but uh, you know he's not dead yet, so don't count him out. It, that, well, you know Bob Dylan's not his real name. You know what his real name is? I used to know, but I don't. Nothing Jewish, isn't it? He's Jewish. Yes, the, the long Jewish name. Well, what is it? He's I looking at <laughs> <laughs> uh, Google it. What is Bob Dylan's name? Uh, Alexa. I got an Alexa right here. Robert Allen Zimmerman. Zimmerman. Yeah. Zimmerman. Robert I'm, Allen Zimmerman. He I'm was born in 1941. Played, often considered to be I, one of the greatest songwriters in history. And he sold his whole library recently. Yes, I, I was going to say that, but you beat me Sorry. Too. Yes. No. He wrote uh, blowing, he wrote Blowing in the Wind, Times Are Changing. Yeah. But, he, uh, but he was smart in selling off his library because it's still viable and mm -hmm. somebody wants to pay that stupid money for it. So yeah. what? I, 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 I think all musicians uh, should do that, with the exception of Paul McCartney. He's already a billionaire, oh, so he doesn't need the money. Um, and, and more recently, he, he, was, uh, he was at the Hollywood Bowl along with uh, you know, doing a... Uh, Jimmy Buffett tribute concert. You can see it all over TikTok and YouTube. Mm -hmm. He does let it be. And the poor guy, you know, it's, I've said this before on other shows where Perry Como's last show in Ireland, he said, you know, Bing Crosby told me one time that, that as you get older, your repertoire gets bigger. But your pipe, <coughs> you know, and that, and that's what he said. And everybody applauded, laughed, and everything. And that's true with rock, with the aging rockers that we've got out there today. Uh, Bob Dylan, for instance, has gotten worse, <laughs> even though you think he was already worse. But he's gotten worse. And but McCartney, um, look, look, I'm a Beatle fan from the word go, and but he shouldn't be out there singing anymore. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, but well, he, no, he's going to do it until he passes away. You know, uh, it's just this just what they do. I and, mean, and, look, look at Mick Jagger, the Stones. I mean, they well, want Jagger to do it still has it. Yeah, but Jagger can still sing and dance. Yeah, and, all that stuff. and yeah. so can. And here's the irony of it all: Ringo still has his voice. That's true. So, he does. Yes, he <laughs> so does. It's, funny. it's irony plus because Ringo didn't have much of a singing voice to begin with. Well, I and like that he, song he did called Photograph. I thought that was a terrific song. Yeah, well, George Harrison wrote it. Yeah, that's a good and, song. And to your point, Tom, he's more youthful too, Ringo is. Yeah, well, he is, and he's just as old as uh, right. Paul almost. 
Um, no, he's the, now, now recently he's let his hair grow and uh, back to being long. And it doesn't look good on him. He, well, he, I didn't. I didn't like that that shave look he had for a long time. I didn't, I didn't like that. Still, yeah. but still, Barbara should, Fox done him right. Apparently, yeah. They met on that set of cavemen. Yeah. He'll he'll cave be man. the last one. To go, <laughs> cave cave he'll man, be, not cave he'll man. He'll be the cave last one. To, Sorry, he'll, he'll, he'll be the still, last one to pass away. Still plays and still looks good. And sounds good. <laughs> hey, look at this comment from Brainbender Banner in California. She says she plays drums, sax, yeah. flute, and keyboard. Talented. And she, op she opened for Alice in Chains and Pike's Place Underground in Seattle in 1995. She says, I played the rooster. I did it in full Navy white uniform. Oh. Thank you for your service again. Very cool. Excellent. Sorry. Very, very cool. Very cool. Well, the only thing I can play is a, a record or a tape. <laughs> yeah, that's that's about my skill level, too. I can turn on a uh, fistful, and there you go. Thank you, honey. Yeah. You're but you got to listen to something besides that all the time. Yes, I do. I listen to YouTube. There you go. Yeah. Why do you listen to on YouTube? Well, the the subject pod blasts my stuff and other people's. You know. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's so <laughs> the nice. things I am involved in, the things I, I watch. And I got her into Space 1999. Oh, Heck yes. thank you for that. Well, there's a Tom. There's a stream. I know you don't probably don't care for that show, but it, there's a stream, an official stream on YouTube that started April 10th of all the episodes back to back in production order on the oh. Shout Shout Studio Factory. YouTube Shout channel. Factory. No, it's Shout Studio. Mm -hmm. Correction, sir. I'm correct on this part. I do make <laughs> plenty of mistakes. It's Shout Studios on YouTube. That's the channel, yeah. and they're streaming, and everyone's commenting, and there's a lot of people tuned in. It's a lot of fun. It's it's like we yeah, had we had that series at Channel 17 when I worked there, and I didn't care for it at all. There's your line. Third time. <laughs> or, 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 it's actually pretty TV. great. I love it. Monetize yeah. Barbara, that Barbara Bain is still alive. I think she so. is in her 90s. Yeah. Yes. Poor Martin isn't whom I met on the set of uh, the Anna Nicole Smith movie. Had lunch with him one on one. I'll never oh, forget it. Oh, yeah, and I told him how I have a bunch of episodes on 16. He goes, well, you know, they have those on Blu-ray now, don't you? I said, I know, but I like that to film special. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, he sent me an autograph when I was a kid. And that's the reason. Uh, well, I don't anymore because my, my, my right hand is, is kind of screwed up. But when I was saying my name with some legibility, I would always uh, put my O's with a circle. And I got that from him. So, wow. And oh, you know what you have in common with Martin? What? Tom, you 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 both are caricature artists. Yeah. That's, that's how he started. He started New York as an artist before he was an actor. Sure, he did. Making a living, drawing yep. people's faces. Yep, he sure did. He sure and, did. Uh, uh, Brain Bender's Banner explains, my uh, grandfather influenced me in playing instruments at six years old. I loved watching him. He could play anything by ear. Very cool. Right. Wow. Nice. Ryan Gosh, well, you still with us? You're kind of quiet over there. <laughs> uh, are we talking about nostalgia again? Okay. <laughs> Music's nostalgic, isn't I, it? I, I, lose, I lose interest when, when you go off on tangents. <laughs> sorry, sorry. All right. I'll, yeah. I'll put the mic down. Yeah. I that would be nice. So. I'm waiting <laughs> for the entertainment. <laughs> well, it's just, right. uh, but I, you know, I, I like I said, you know, I like all kinds of movies. I like all kinds of music and stuff like that. But some things I just didn't care for. And um, number four, that's, that's Combs good. being one of them. What? <laughs> I was trying to be funny. Combs, oh. Combs you don't care for oh, hair combs, oh. hair brushes. Well, no, I'm just, you know, I've just been busy around here. I mean, I have been really working around the house is purging a lot of stuff you know that's how i found that tv guide i just been busy doing stuff you know how do you spend a lot of time on your front porch telling kids to get out of your yard <laughs> <laughs> you sound like a cranky old guy that just yeah. wants to get out of there's, get out there's, of kids. there's no kids yard. there's no kids in my neighborhood they're all grown up and moved away okay. thank goodness that's yeah. good for you then. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you just get grumpy when you get older. That's all. A big deal. Not necessarily. <laughs> Some people become big kids. I'm just a big kid. I just enjoy life. Me too. Yeah. yeah. I don't. Well, I, don't I do pay. too. I don't. I don't enjoy life. Yeah. Don't you don't enjoy life. life. You just said you don't enjoy life. No, I said <laughs> I do enjoy life. No, you I didn't think that what you said. That's what you meant. Don't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Is that what I said? Yeah, you said I don't enjoy life. Well, I do enjoy life. He doesn't enjoy though, doesn't he? 
Everything he doesn't like, he's, he's always glad to tell us. I hate that song. I didn't like that show. I didn't like this. I didn't like that. <laughs> well, come on, Al. It's, it's a good show. <laughs> tell us about yeah. good shows. We all we all like certain things. We all don't like, you know. Well, you don't have to like everything, but you don't have to tell everybody you don't like everything. Well, it's only what the stuff we're talking about. I just don't pull stuff out of thin air. It's just whatever right. we were talking about, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> just everything everybody else likes, you hate. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. That's, ooh, that's not true. That's what not true. you said? I said Casablanca was my favorite movie. Oh, everybody says that. Well, I, Casablanca is a fine movie. It's, it's not my it. favorite. It's a great movie, but, Al. Shut up. But everybody says, well, what's your favorite movie? Uh, Citizen Kane. What's your favorite movie? Casablanca. Well, okay, my favorite movie is Star Trek Four. There you go. It's what? Star Trek Four. My favorite movie ever. Mine what too. was what, what was the title? Favorite ever, but favorite of the track. The Voyage oh. Home. Yeah, oh. about the whales. The one with the, whale the whales. Movie. You know, we we actually, we actually ran that movie in seventy millimeter at the Columbia Theater when I was a projectionist there. Yeah, but it was a blow up print. So no, well, it was in seventy millimeters. All I'm telling you. I'm just saying yeah. it's a blow up print. So so what? It was still in seventy millimeter. And it's a blow up print from thirty five. So shot what? Thirty five millimeter, not. Well, Oppenheimer was shot in 70 millimeter. That wasn't a blow up. A big deal. That was, you know, yeah. of course, you know, anyway. of course, you, we won't, we won't go. We won't but go. I don't Let's know. Let's talk if, about nostalgia again. If I, I had to pick a favorite. UFOs, UFO man's if I, if I If I had to pick a favorite Star Trek movie and that's and just a stretching it, it would be The Wrath of Khan. I like that one all right. <laughs> Everybody likes that one. Well, it's, it's the same thing that you complain about with the other ones. It's it's the same thing. That's the one everybody likes, you know? That's why Star Trek Four is the yeah. one to like. Well, I have <laughs> a nice forty by sixty poster on the Wrath of Khan. Chance, you want to buy it? I, you've shown that to me. It's impressive. What price are we talking about? It's 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 it's, it's never been used. It's a forty by sixty original. I, that I didn't answer know. my question, sir. Do you have a price in mind, or do you not want to stay over the air? I had, no, not really. I don't have a price in mind. <laughs> Give me a ballpark. You sold me this desk for twenty bucks. Are we talking twenty bucks? <laughs> yeah, you were supposed to put up that Marvel banner and all this thing oh, I yeah. gave it behind you, but you, you never do it. You never do it. That's okay. It's because That's he, right. he hasn't done his Marvel show yet. Uh, hey, thank you. I was saving it for a big reveal. Yeah. Just like the Fall Guy. Uh, yeah. for, that's, you know. Hey, he hosted Saturday Night Live last yes, night, did. Tom. I, yes, I taped did. it. I, or I DVR'd it. I haven't watched it yet. But he was on The Tonight Show, and he was actually very funny. And the, that movie may not suck. Barry King yeah. was telling me today, uh, he says, uh, I, I, when I saw that trailer with my wife, I said, it's either going to be really, really good or it's really going to suck. And so we'll, well, we'll I'm not a Fall out. Guy fan, but I, I think the movie's going to be really good. Yeah. Yeah, and, really? and, and on the Tonight Show, he showed a stunt he did himself, Ryan Gosling. And what was interesting is he didn't have a British accent anymore. He lost his accent like Richard Dawson did back in the day. Really? Yeah. Well, I mean, um, a good a good Tom Holland's British. I mean, but, you know, he, he can lose his accent, you know. Well, in acting, yes, I'm talking in an interview on the Tonight Show. He was speaking in his normal voice without an accent. I'm not talking about so, acting. So that in means scene. all the British accents you hear are fake anyway, because if they can drop their accent just like um, that, the snap of a finger, uh, then that means it's all fake. So well, you know, you know, Austin Butler, who played Elvis, it took him a long time to get rid of that voice because oh. he still talked like Elvis. And uh, I saw an interview with him where he it said it took he had to go to a voice coach to lose that. Yeah. Are we going to see Fall Guy together, you, me, and Tom, and Ron? Can we make a commitment now on a May 3rd? <laughs> May 3rd? If we, if we can agree on a theater, maybe that uh, Web Gen, Al, it'll probably be blown long up. As long as it's not Phipps Plaza. Well, okay, wait, wait, wrong wait, with Phipps. What, what, don't, what don't you like about Phipps Plaza? Well, I just don't, I don't, I don't like that poo-poo mall, you know, but think about it is, I mean, if, if somebody will drive, I'll ride. I'm there you go. That was the word I was looking for. <laughs> just, if someone Phipps it is. drive. Yeah, then that's okay. No, I thought the theater was fine. I, I enjoyed that theater. I, I like that theater. Um, going out of my way to go see a movie there, that's another thing. But I grew, I grew yeah. there. <laughs> it's too far to go. Well, moving. no, it, I don't have nothing. The theater's fine. <laughs> yeah. I just want the company because for those that don't know, I have every Fall Guy in 16 millimeter film. I'm going to change the camera angle so you can see it. We well, haven't told us that a gazillion times before. There's new people tuning in all the time, like tonight, uh, UFO Man and BBB. 
Those are really? real. Yeah, uh, I can see. Guy. Okay, let me get my fat face off the screen. Yes, go ahead, Sarah. I I can't see Tim in chat, but I can't see him in the uh, stream guard backstage. But I can't see him in chat. It's That's very weird. Who yeah. UFO man? Hey, yeah, it's Tim. He's like one of my best friends ever in the history of the world. Are you telling me I should? I had put his comments on the screen. Is right. that what you're saying? Uh, I I'm do? saying in chat here on the YouTube site, I can't see him at all. But I can't, I can't see him in the StreamYard chat, but I can't see him in the YouTube at all. You should be able to see him, Sarah. I, uh -huh. Well, see, YouTube sometimes does this, and since I don't have a wrench here, and he also doesn't have a wrench here, I just noticed that I can't see him. Well, you, you, you don't, you don't, Sarah, you, Sarah, you don't have your StreamYard open? This is your StreamYard, not mine. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's right. Okay, you have sorry. to give her a wrench on YouTube, Al. It's oh, easy. Oh, okay. I'm still learning. I'm I was sorry. joking, saying you're barking up the wrong tree, Sarah. If you think Al's going to give you a wrench? Oh, I was kidding. Well, what? I was yeah, joking. I know. No, no. That's I, mean, okay. I mean, I just because he doesn't know how to do it is all. No, I, I get all that, but I'm not worried about that. But the fact is, this is like the first time in years I haven't seen somebody plus somebody that I'm cool with in chat. It's freaking weird. Hmm. I just want to say oh. that out loud because uh, he's there saying he's here to support me, and I can't. He can't I, I don't know if you can see me, but uh, I can't see him. He's saying oh. he can see you, Sarah. Well, I can't see him. That's weird. Sorry. I don't hmm. know. That's weird. Exactly. Yes, exactly. But that, I just wanted to bring that. Oh, you guys, are that are you watching? Are you watching on your phone or on a computer? Okay. Um, on the computer, I have uh, StreamYards open with the StreamYard okay. chat on the okay. side. Okay. And then uh, also on the computer, uh, on the monitor, I have the chat open with the YouTube side. Can't see him there. And I oh. can't see him on the Roku. <laughs> and I can't see him on my cell phone. So that's super hmm. weird. That's weird. That's mm -hmm. right. Well, Sorry. we'll have to figure that it's out later. It's Spectrum's but I, I, fault. <laughs> no, I just blame YouTube for other problems because YouTube is forever broken. But I just wanted to tell Tim that because I can't see him. And uh, I didn't know if you could see me. Wow. I couldn't see you, Tim. So, so schedule permitting. I'm sorry, guy. Um, UFO man. Schedule permitting. Is that a yes about Fall Guy? Al and Tom and Ron. Yeah. yeah. If our schedules can uh, all come together, good. We'll yeah. see if it works. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So uh, everybody else can see Tim, but not me. Weird YouTube. That's on a Friday. It could be there. Probably a Thursday night preview thing. But yeah. So Friday is May third to Friday. All right. Enough. Sorry. I just don't go to movies at night, but the daytime is fine. Me too. I'd rather go on a school day when all the kids yeah. are in school. That's probably the last day of school, May third, in our well, neck I don't of the think woods. The kids will be flocking to see the fall. Guy. No, <laughs> and you but know what? Hey, huh? Then again, they might because of Barbie, the movie Barbie. Of well, the right. Right. The AMC the will have a special pre-screening of that. I get notified when they do that, but that's always at night. You know, when they have a, uh, a a special screening for AMC Stubbs members, but I I just don't go at night. Did you all see Bullet Train? I know Al and I did together. Tom, did you see Bullet Train or Ron? Bullet Train? Yeah, yeah. I like, I like Bullet director. Train. It's good. Same, that's the director of Bullet Train did Fall Guy. And he's yeah, David good. Leach, and he's a real stuntman. That's why I think it might not suck. And it, it broke a James Bond record. You probably heard about that for the most rollovers mm -hmm. in a car crash. Oh, that was and awesome. They, they, they showed that, the behind-the-scenes footage of that on The Tonight Show the other night. It's on Peacock if you want to see Ryan Gosling okay. talking about fall, and the the band did a great version of the unknown stuntman. I looked on Peacock, and it's not on there unless they they put it up. They recently. don't have the Tonight Show in general on Peacock. Oh yeah, they have Night Show, but I haven't seen that one. I'll have to go well, back. Was, to it was on like last Wednesday night. It's on my DVR. Oh well. Okay. Well, a lot of times on the on, on 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 those shows, they just show clips and stuff from it. They don't show the whole show. Well, it's on YouTube. I, it's on YouTube. The Ryan Gosling, if you want to see an interview, it, it was a oh. pretty good little interview just for the clips. Enough said. Did he, did he do his now. own stunts on the Fall Guy? He did one, and he was suspended Whatever. from wires, like in a hotel, like the Atlanta Hilton Towers. You know how high up that is on the top floor. Oh, okay. And they just drop him, and it's real. It's not CGI. He did that one stunt, and he looks like a total BA doing that. <laughs> you know what? You know what? One movie he was in that I really, really like. A movie you probably never heard of. It's called Drive. I've um, heard of it. I have, I have the Blu-ray. It's it, he plays, um, and he has very little dialogue. He he's a he's a high-paid driver for criminals, basically. You know whether they're robbing somebody or whatever, but he's their driver, and he and it's called Drive, and it's a wonderful movie. It's just he's so good in it, uh, and he don't take no shit off of anybody. And everybody mm. wants wants 
him to drive for them if they're going to do some criminal activity. He wants, uh, they want the uh, Ryan Gosling character to drive. It's, it's called Drive. It's a, it's a wonderful movie. You should check uh, it out. Wait, there's a comment, Al. Would you please read that comment on the screen from UFO Man? I can see the legend himself, Chance Bartell. Oh, you wanted me to say that. Yeah. Hashtag facts. <laughs> Chance Bartels is no legend. You know? I'm a legend in my own mind, man. Uh, Remember that from Sudden know, Impact? That was a Chance great Bartels line. Chance Bartels is in love with himself. That's all. But he's not Clint a legend. Clint he's Clint 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 I've I've known him too long. You know? Oh, well, God. Uh, everybody's in love with Negative Chance. Negative that's just, that's just <laughs> hashtag he's facts. Yeah. Like what? What? You're a legend in your own mind. That was a great line in uh, Sudden Impact by Clint Eastwood. Along with uh, Go Ahead, Make My Day. That's probably the number one line, of course, in that movie. Go Ahead, Make My Day. You know, he's 93 now and still working on a movie. Yeah. He looks yeah, kind of rough. Uh, he looks he looks kind of... I'm, I'm worried about it. He's yeah. very frail looking. He's very frail Yeah, he looks very old and uh, skeleton. Yeah. Yeah. He's losing weight. But his son's fight. still hot. Anyways, and Gene Hackman as well. People were bashing Gene Rat Hackman. But you know, Matt. Clint Eastwood's son, Scott Eastwood, he hasn't really broken out any good movies. He's he's been he's been kind of like a lot of B movies, and he hasn't really starred in anything. You know, and well, it's a shame. I don't I don't know what the deal is. Well, how can uh, he live up to like what his father's already done? I mean, that's kind of daunting, especially if. Maybe acting's not his, you know, real passion. Who knows? Well, maybe it's not. But a lot of people that are daughters or sons of famous actors, they sometimes they change their name. Um, but you know, but Scott Eastwood, I've seen him in movies and he's not bad, he's good. But it's usually just B, you know, action movies that he's been in. Nothing, nothing really oh, he's still good looking, you know, where he's where he's showing chops as an actor. So. Al, there's a comment and I'd like you to read. What? From BBB, <laughs> Brain Bender's Banter. Uh, Biden looks frail. Eastwood is fine. Well, Biden does look fail. I won't go down that road, but frail. You know. <laughs> frail. Um, like, and, 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 and people I'll are making he's, he's the worst president I've ever. People were talking but, negatively but, about Gene Hackman. A surf a, a photo of him surfaced, and he's been retired for what twenty years or so, twenty five years from acting. Mm -hmm. More than that. And I thought that was not fair. You know, I mean, the man is a legend. You know, leave him alone. You know. They shouldn't have snapped a photo of him being unaware anyway. You know That's what his first movie? You know what his first movie was? Not Bonnie and Clyde. No, it was. I know. Yep. I know. Oh, you know. Uh, also, it was Gene Wilder's first movie. He had a small part in it. Remember when Bonnie and Clyde? You know, Gene Hackman sitting with his girlfriend on the front porch, and he sees his car. He says, "They're stealing my car. They're stealing my car." And uh, then they take off and then they get in another car and start chasing them. And, G and Gene Wilder said, I'm going to kill him. I want to kill him. But and then, you know, uh, they turn around and start chasing them. And his girlfriend says, go faster, go faster. Anyway, they end up, you know, getting in the car and whatever. But that was his first movie. Played the, the sheriff that mowed him down. Uh, Dub Taylor. No, Denver. No, uh, Denver Pyle, feature uncle. Oh, Jeff. Denver Pyle, Denver Pyle. You're right. It's yeah. And um, a lot of good actors in that. And Faye Dunaway. Well, he, he, he didn't mow him down. He just faked a, a broken down car with a tire, and then you know. Well, Faye Dunaway was gorgeous. She she looked different in that, unlike she ever did ever again. I guess because of plastic surgery or whatever, dyeing her hair. But I thought she just looked great in that movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, who was that weird guy in that movie uh, who was married to Beth Howland? Uh, and he played the boy in Lost in Space. Uh, Ron will probably know. Pollard? Bill no. Miller? No. Pal Pollard. He was in Star Trek Mary. Michael J. Uh, Pollard. That's it. Michael J. Pollard. That's he was what in I that. said. You did, sir. I need he, to listen better. He passed away years ago. No, he only passed away about two or three years ago. But yes, he, he did. Really? You really? I thought it was longer yeah. than that. I mean, he was in The Fall Guy. I have it on film. Mint print. Fuji color. Yeah. With uh, Robert Davy, uh, who was a Bond villain in uh, 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 *License to Kill*, yeah. Michael J. Pollard. Yeah. Wait a minute. No. Oh, Michael no. J. Pollard. Let's see when this guy died. Why is it important? <laughs> well, we're speaking about sheriffs. I stood in for well, that. It's right. He died. He died November twentieth, twenty nineteen, from cardiac arrest. Wow. Hey, he was, was it really? eighty. He was eighty. Wow. I didn't know he was that old. I was going to tell you a story about Brian Dennehy. I stood in for Brian Dennehy on a TV show here. In Atlanta. He was a good actor too. He was a sheriff in first blood with uh, 
Sylvester Stallone. Yes. The one that was trying to kill him. And they uh, had a scene in a show that I stood in for him. He was a frail sheriff and he couldn't do a lot of walking and he was having trouble getting around on the set. So I had to do a lot of his doubling and I'd put on the same sheriff outfit and walk down the hallway. But I had to like walk a little better than him because he had trouble walking and he had trouble sitting. So sitting up and different, different things where I had to sit for him. And, uh, you know, it's just an interesting thing. He had, he'd gotten older. He was the same height as I was six, three, but he was old and bent over by the time I stood in for him. So I had to stand in for him like a older person. Would you oh. mind telling the story, Ron, to Sarah about David uh, Augen Stiers from MASH? Cause she loves MASH, the TV show. You were his stand in. And you wanted oh, yeah. a photo with him. What did he say, sir? To you? Oh, I stood in for him on a TV movie that he did with Judith Light about the Marie Hilly story. It was called Wife, Mother, Murderer, a made-for-TV movie. And uh, I, I had to grow a beard for two and a half weeks during the whole shoot of the run of the movie. I stood in for him. And then I did doubling scenes after the movie was over. So I had a beard just like he had in the movie. And it came out the same way with a little white under my lip. And then... The last day he was on the set, I said, can I take a picture with you? And he said, I don't do that. And I said, okay, you don't have to. That's oh, what a jerk. He yeah. just didn't want to take a picture. He said, oh, I, don't I don't do that. Do. You know, he doesn't do that. Hey, Ron, what is that? that? That picture behind you is from a movie. When I worked at the Terror, we played that. That's Legends uh, of the Fall, no? Legends of the Fall, Legends yes. Legends of the Fall with uh, Brad Pitt. I got an autograph copy, but it's not Brad Pitt's autograph on it. It's, uh, make you big, dude. Hang on. Sorry. Sorry, Ron. It's James Horner, the guy who did the music from the movie. Oh, he, oh, he, he, he does a lot of good music, but uh, when, I, when I worked at the Terror, we played that movie there. I have it on DVD, but that's really a wonderful movie. Yeah, that's a good You're one. saying James Horner signed that? Yeah, he signed the... It's got his autograph on there. Somewhere. He did the music from Star Trek II, Wrath of Khan. A lot of movies. A lot of movies. He's, Barry he's, King was telling me he recycled music for Wrath of Khan, and he played it for me from uh, Wolfen. Or, wasn't that movie Wolfen? Remember uh, with the... Uh, Albert Finney. I'm, right. He's done a lot I always, of, I always get confused movie. with that movie and um, the one with uh, D. D. Uh, Wallace Stone. Um, God, Wolfen and uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'll look it up. <laughs> All right. Well, it's nine o'clock. I got to go watch some Billy Joel. So, well, <laughs> thanks for being here, my brother. Ron. Thanks for uh, dropping I guess, by. I got to say good night. All right. I'll call you, Ron. I'll call you tomorrow or something. All right. See you later. Later. All right. Bye. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, there, there we, we go. go. Four quad, as Tom says. Oh, some are bigger. And I can, let me make you on top. There we go. So now Tom and Al are sort of facing each other, kind of sort of. Oh, Al's looking right at Tom there. How about that? Look at no, no, Al. Look the other way. Look, look the other way out. That, now that's I'm looking beautiful. at Tom. <laughs> beautiful. Oh, I wish I'd read this comment while Ron was still with us. If he's still watching somewhere, he's probably not. Ron, you may not remember what people say. But you never forget how they make you feel. That wasn't cool of him. Yeah, I agree. I don't do that. Yeah. Yeah, I took a, well, I thought I took a screenshot. Well, do you think you can get your mic to work, Tom? No, because it says it's, it does not support it uh, by StreamYard. And uh, it even comes up with a disclaimer. Saying, That's weird. How about how about OBS? Yeah, well, I didn't try OBS because... I don't have OBS on my phone. Well, you didn't. You didn't. Uh, you didn't know that before you bought it. I didn't buy that microphone for Streamyard. Yeah. <laughs> if oh. you're hey, when did you when did you buy it? Have you had it all for a long time? I had it for a while. Oh, hey, Tom, okay. I bought it. Go, I bought it to go on uh, this rig right here. To go on this rig, right here, and basically your phone uh, goes mm -hmm. and. Uh, and that, and on top of the rig, it goes the the microphone. All right. It's, yeah. It's made, yeah. So show you, that you, I got you big. Let's see that. That's pretty you cool. Hold, you hold the camera, you know, however you want. It's got grips here, and it's got a wide lens here, and any iPhone can fit on this particular rig, and then the the um, microphone fits uh, screws on top. And you can go there, it can go. It's got one, two, three different locations the uh, microphone can go. And it's made by uh, uh, Gorilla, let's see, um, 
it wasn't cheap. Uh, B scrub is what it's called. It's called a B scrub. So, B hey. says that looks confusing. And it was not confusing. <laughs> it does look confusing. Yeah, yeah it's not. It's, it works really good. But my camera now has a wide wide angle lens uh, built into it, which is probably better, just as good as that one. So uh, I don't really need that particular uh, thing anymore. Anyway. Heavy butter on the popcorn says BBB brain benders banter. I agree. Agreed. I love butter and popcorn. Yes, most. Yep. Mm -hmm. I never put butter on my popcorn. I will not be Why eating not? your popcorn. Why not, Al? You got to say your line a fifth time. I don't care for mm -hmm. it. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there. That's getting I to just, be like that's what she said. Yeah, yeah. That's what she said is is funny though. <laughs> Oh well. I don't, I, don't hear, I don't hear your birds anymore, uh, Sarah. Have they gone to sleep or something? Yeah, I put them to bed extra early today, and they uh, actually went. To I'll bed. be right back. I gotta go. Oh, Okie dokie, right. Smokey. Mm -hmm. What? What? Where is he going? Hey, Sonny. Mm -hmm. He's gonna go make a pee pee. <laughs> yeah, he had to go tinkle tinkle. <laughs> well, well, I mean, you know, he, you gotta go. You gotta go. I mean, it's all there is to it. Oh, yeah. I had to get up and go, too, because, uh, you know, I did. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, we would yeah. get a word in edgewise. I don't blame you for walking well, away. I went, I, went, I went before uh, I came on. So so there you go. Well, I mean, I did, too, but that was, like, hours ago. Oh, wow. Well, mine was hours ago. But, uh, <laughs> you know, at least, at least I went. That so. is true. Congratulations. Tom, so, so I got um, yeah. I know you probably already talked about this. I wasn't the perfect, comics. But, yeah. So how many comics did you? Uh, well, Barry I, Barry brought seventeen long boxes, and they were pretty much all full. I haven't gone through them yet. I haven't even started. Uh, I need yeah. to do that. I just been so excited. I took a little nap. I was so ex I was like a kid on Christmas morning last night. You know, waiting for Santa to come. I yeah. but that's what they look like. And he had the cool artwork on the boxes. By the way, Barry King hosts a show called BK on the Air on WBHF Radio. You can hear it on the WBHF app. But uh, look, there, there they are, and I'm going to go through them. Most of they're all Marvel and DC with some DC horror comics thrown in. And Tom, I need to have you over here soon. Uh, one day when traffic's bad, when you're because you work on my <laughs> side. Let's play some pinball. Uh, Barry, oh, yeah. get the, you'll appreciate this, Tom. We were playing in my Indiana Jones pinball game, and he'd yep. never played it. And he was doing great. He was kicking butt, yep. and I dropped my water bottle on the power cord, and it knocked the power out right when he was about to get multi-ball. He was like, oh. man, I was doing so good. I mean, he was nice about it, but I, I felt terrible. It was a total accident. Clumsy, clumsy. Did, did, did you give him his quarterback? <laughs> a token. No, it operates on tokens. I gave him a token. Oh, okay. Actually, it has a sticker. I bought it from an arcade back in 1996 when it was pretty new. It says, tokens only, no quarters. I left that on there. You know, I was, yeah. I was wondering who was making all that noise. It was obviously <laughs> Al. Wow. Al, there's a, there's a comment for you, Al, from Jim's camera at Don, North Carolina, your home state. You want to read it? Al, I'm barring your line. I didn't care for it. That's right. Now, what are you eating? Oh, let me make you big. <laughs> Yuck. I don't care for it. <laughs> Is that like Big Newtons? Is that yeah. Big Newtons? This is raspberry. Huh? Um, that's from Costco. You know, you know as you get older, yeah. you lose your sense of taste. So, uh, Al, you should throw that in your air fryer. Not, not, not only yeah. has it lost the sense of taste, it's lost, <laughs> it lost the sense of taste about everything. <laughs> <laughs> Al, do you clean your air fryer with one of your famous uh, Lysol wipes? No, Anyone? you don't do that. I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, it has it. a it has a tray in the bottom. Sometimes it's a little bit of oil that drips on it. You just take a napkin and wipe a uh, paper towel, wipe it out. Hey, there's another comment for you, Al, from our huh. friend in California. One of our friends in California. The Northern I don't California care for friend. It. He says, "I'm dying here, I Basil." Hear <laughs> <laughs> I, I hear you. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you dying? Well, we're all dying a little bit each day. Remember that. Oh. Hey, Tom, I want to show you something I showed Sarah earlier. I told you about okay. that Space 1999 marathon. Here's a shot from my collection of a cut scene because of excessive violence in this episode <sighs> called Al, End Al, of Eternity. Al, wait, 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 wait. Al, when you're opening something, move away from the microphone. My God. 
That's a great mic he's got. Well, First Martin mic. Landau's character was attacked by a guy wielding a model airplane in the face. Yeah. And they showed his bloody hand. They couldn't show his face because look at the effect. Oh, my God. Oh, that's lame now they compared to what they do on television. Yeah, or but, well, all right. Leave that up for a second. Leave all right. Up. Sadly, sadly, if you do a side by side comparison to, <laughs> I can't believe I'm going to say this, but it's okay. We're, we're, we're cable, right? Yeah. Cable. If you compare that picture to the Bob Crane death picture, it looks the same. Oh my God. I hope my friends aren't listening. The authors of the official Bob Crane. Oh my God. Yeah. I've never seen the autopsy pictures. Thank God. Or the no, crime no, no, scene no, 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 no. Crime I, scene photos. Crime scene. Uh, yeah. Uh, so my who? friends, Linda Groundwater, if you're watching in Australia or, uh, oh my gosh, I am so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And okay. I'm so sorry, but he just mentioned it. it didn't show he's it. He's just joking. It's a funny joke. But it's, no, it's, not, actually, no, he's not joking. No, 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 he's serious. No, no, no. He's serious. Joking. He's serious. he's serious. He's serious. He's that's serious. That's kind of what it looked like. Uh, I wonder, that's what it reminded me of. Because once you see that picture, you go, oh, I'm not going to forget that one anytime soon. Now I've got to get the book just to give a plug. Hang on. <laughs> now, now chances. Plug of murder? Like, what? Anyway, never mind. Now everybody's leaving again. Carol M. I Ford believe. is a friend of the show. I'm going to make this big. This is Look how big and thick this book is. That now, long. have you have you had a chance to read it cover to cover yet? I've read I've read half. I'm going to read the whole thing and have them on again now that I have StreamYard. Yeah. Carol M. Ford wrote this. It's an excellent book. And, uh, you know, they're, they're really campaigning hard oh. uh, for the memory of this man. And yeah. uh, there he is. And he was a radio guy. You know that, Basil. Yes, he Tom. was. Yeah. He was a radio guy. He was, he was kind of a creepy guy. <laughs> he was too. a drummer, too. Hey, he hey. was a drummer. Autograph copy, by yeah. the way, of the from the authors. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Linda, Carol M. Ford, Linda, J. Groundwater, and D. Young are the authors of this book. And they worked for decades on it. So kudos to them. And it's a great read. It is yeah, good, I, Tom. Tom, yeah, you want to talk? He, he was a drummer as well. So, uh that's it. Um, I think that's. I think it's great. You know, I thought always thought wouldn't have been a good. Um, uh, I know I took my glasses off. Uh, what would have been a good sequel to Hogan's Heroes is, is if uh, Schultz had become. You know, because Schultz was a toy maker on the show, and I, I, that's what he used to be. He used to make toys, and uh, so after the war, if they had gotten together, Bob Crane would have started a company, and then integrated with Schultz and then Kepler would have worked for everybody and it, it would have been a good show. I, I think it could have done something with it, but that's, my, that's, that's me. Uh, it's a shame you didn't take advantage. Sure. That's just me. Uh, Al, what are you doing? Are you, you're playing the Tom's. Uh, never mind. I turned it down. Keep going. Okay. All right. <laughs> God, he's bored during his own show. Hey, he's become a cranky old guy. What's going on? <laughs> Anyway. That's like the pot calling the kettle black, isn't it? No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Well, well I, I need to leave as well. So anyway, oh, okay. You, okay. Al, Al, it was Al, good to see you, Tom. Bad. What? Yeah, well, it was great to see you, Tom. I didn't expect you to make a cameo appearance. This is more than a cameo appearance. Yeah, this is I'm, great. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. So I will. Uh, I will carry roll. The flip side, so to speak, as they say. Are you Are you working tomorrow? Yes, I am. Okay. Did you work today? Ah, uh, yes. Oh man, he's a lot good. Man. Work you is good. Sure. Sure. Uh, good to hear you. I didn't see you, but good to hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? I said, oh. He just said, nothing. Never he said <laughs> it's good to hear you. I can't see you, but it's good to hear you. Yeah, see me right there. Now. That's me right there. Like you can't see me. Yeah, yeah. Well. <laughs> All right, y'all be good. Later, my Later, brother. Tom. Hey, hey is your car? Oh, I didn't get that. Well, he may not want to talk about that on the air anyway. I was hoping he everything squared away. Anyway, mm -hmm. whatever. Chance how, long, how, long, how long have we been on? Two hours, 37 minutes, 43, 44 oh, seconds. Wow. So I guess we should, we should wrap, I guess. Are you going to watch any of the Billy Joel concert, Al? Yeah, I'm going to watch some of it. It's 10 after 9 now here. It, it, but Sarah's still got just under three hours before it airs in her neck of the woods. That's okay. I don't have TV. Oh, you know, well, you know, you Sarah, Paramount Plus? you're really not missing anything. No, nope. well, yeah, Plus? obviously, I'm not missing anything. I'd rather watch uh, Space at 10 9 all day, and I have it. So I'm like gonna get back to that. Dragon's Domain will be starting soon at 23rd in production order, and that was the basis for the movie Alien. It's a terrifying episode, it's overwhelmingly 
people's pick for the favorite their favorite episode of Space 1999. Yeah. Well, I just thank you for that so much. I really like the show. It's my favorite show. Right I know you mean it. I know you're sincere and you mean it. So thank you. And thank you for bringing so many of your wonderful members of your My Flock community to our channels, the Nostalgic Pod Blast, my channel, and Al's channel. Say it, Al, again, so I get it right. Hardy Entertainment hyphen Al's Place on YouTube. And also on Twitch, just look up Movie Albert. That's two words, Movie Albert, on Twitch. Well, right. um, yeah. an answer to you, Chance. Uh, the thing is... Uh, you're uh, a part of the flock, and they're by proxy, so is Al. So, therefore, Thanks, all we baby. do is flock together. So, that's what we do. Yeah, that's fine. The family that flocks together stays together. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Cool. Well, listen, I'm going to go in there and catch some of the show, I guess, the uh, Billy Joel thing. Sarah and I will oh, stay right. on for another hour, just one on one. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I'm going to watch 1999 also. But, Al, yeah. thanks yeah. for letting us do a stream. I had to really kind of kind of nudge him to go live tonight. He was busy cleaning his house. And I was cleaning up. really. I came home from uh mass and I just, after I had lunch, uh, I started cleaning and stuff and I just got busy. I need to have you over here. Al. I've never had you over here and I feel kind of guilty. I had Barry King over here. I've never had you or Tom over here. And you've been over here thousands I know. of times. But it, listen, mainly, now, now, I don't feel as bad about your situation now because you don't want to drive, but Tom mm -hmm. works at the weather channel right around the corner. So, I'm going to correct that. We're going to play pinball and maybe he'll drive you over here, Al, because I know you won't drive on your own, but you I are like to, invited. I, I just don't drive. like to drive at night. As long as it's in the daytime, you know? And thanks again to everybody that tuned in. Um, Al, do you have any music to play us off with? And I can hit the end button and then we can chit chat by behind scenes. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, I got to switch the brand to you. Hang on, buddy. I, maybe mm. are you doing it through your board, right? There it is. What? Never mind. Oh. Never mind. Well, listen, Later, thanks, for, thanks for uh, tuning in and watching. And Sarah, talk to you soon. Chance, I guess I'll catch you later. Yeah, and thanks to Jim's camera at dawn, too, uh, oh, for yeah. all the great commentary. And uh, nice to meet you, Brain Benders Banter on YouTube, UFO Man. Thanks for mm -hmm. being here. I'm um, just going down the list. Everybody that was here in chat and on Facebook, your friend, Al, there was a lot of people on Facebook. So I guess it did go yeah, through. Kath Catherine was on there and uh, Bill. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. So thanks nice, a lot man. for sharing your precious weekend time as the weekend winds down with us. Have All a great right. week. Have a great week. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye. And I'll put the logo up, Al. Hang on. Right. I'll, 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> oh, yeah. One second. Don't, don't, don't end it yet. <laughs> Give me a minute. Got to plug our little. Uh, there, there we go. go. All right, There's later. that. Okay. We <laughs> have pretend I'm there too. <laughs> oh, yeah. We got to fix that, don't we? Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye.